We actually had a, uh, do you guys remember last year we did a bit on a Swedish goat called, <laughs> I'm going to butcher the name, what was it, Gavel? But it's not. How goddamn dare you? I have followed the Gavel Goat for about 15 years now. It's in Gavel, Sweden. And they erect this thing, I think, 15 days before Christmas every single year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got a 15% survival rate because locals try to burn it to the ground, even though they've sprayed it down with fire retardant chemicals. Okay. All I was going to say was, from the YouTube bit that we have <clears throat> on the official Middle Class Holes YouTube page, shameless plug there, a gentleman named, uh, it's it's Snake Biter, but it's not, it, uh, the first, it, <laughs> The first letter starts with a Z. Snake, snake biter. Oh God, yes. He's anyway. He's Swedish. No, he 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 gave us kudos. He said so. Of the fifty-three times the goat was erected, has been burnt thirty times, sabotaged four, was stolen once, collapsed twice, and was hit by a car. So it so it collapsed once there. Uh, that's not a sixty percent survival rate. It's a kill rate of seventy-one point seven percent. <laughs> we appreciate you. Thank you, Snakebiter. Oh, snake uh, he also later on said, because um, we were trying to figure out the legalities behind this, and he said, it is arson to burn the goat. One man got sentenced to parole in an $8,000 fine. Uh, I said, seems like a, quote, l pretty light sentence. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> this is why nobody else continues to comment. <laughs> What are you talking about, man? That is solid. That is so good. Uh, that's wild, man. So I just more I'm more interested in the the one time it was stolen. Like, how does one make off with this thing? Yeah. I want to hear that story first. I think I think in the modern era, the gavel goat has increased in size. I think at one time it was just you know like everything. I mean, uh, you was, know, yeah, it was smaller. This it Little was smaller, and you know, I'm sure like at one time the uh, Rockefeller Center christmas tree was just a regular fucking tree and sorry. now it's got to be 14 stories tall or it's nothing sorry so yeah the beauty of wikipedia gave you a timeline actually started 1966 the uh, theft came via 1973 method of destruction you ask stolen the goat was stolen by a man who then placed it in his backyard he later he was later sentenced to two years in prison for aggravated theft God holy damn. fuck someone burned it down and got eight grand i mean that's not chump change right? but pay, but it again way better than two years in swedish prison yeah but it, but again you gotta you gotta look at the timeline of it because once it becomes a novelty you know what i mean like oh it gets burned down every other year so like all right. Uh -huh. Well, let's. I'll give you the years leading up to that, starting in 1966. All right, and then this is method of destruction. Fire survived. Survived. 1969. Fire. We move into a new decade. Fire. Smashed to pieces. Collapsed. Then stolen. So, I guess everything. I don't know. Then, then to round out the 70s, it was, it was fire collapsed, hit by car, fire kicked to pieces, fire slash broken. I just like that when it got hit by a car, it got hit by a Volvo. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. You see it. Yeah. <laughs> Student ran the, the hind legs of the goat with a Volvo Swedish. Amazon collapsing the structure. <laughs> now, I, it's been a while since I visited the Gavel Goat uh, Wikipedia page. And thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my soul for bringing this up because this is something that I've brought up for a decade now because I feel like it's a Christmas tradition that we should adopt here in the States. I don't know how we pass it off to the American public as a Yule Tide way. It's, it's a Yule goat. Okay. Apparently over there, I believe Santa rides a goat into town. He doesn't take the crazy reindeer, which is kind of ironic because reindeer are from that region <laughs> and he, he shirks the reindeer for a goat. Um, but I believe it's in the 1980s. My favorite story is, of course, uh, two guys dress up like Santa and the gingerbread man, and they burn the goat down by launching flaming arrows into the goat. And then as they're running from police, of course, the gingerbread man turns around and screams, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. God. Hilarious. I do. The, so the... Uh... <laughs> The columns of this are security additions, date of destruction, method of destruction, then notes. There was a period, uh, 2017 to 2020, that they really uh, tightened the screws 
on security because it survived those four years, the longest stretch in the whole fucking thing's history. All right. So, but it does have, so 2017, double fences, camera, and guards. 2018, fencing, camera, guards, taxi rank to increase the number of people nearby. 2019, double fence, 24-hour closed-circuit television, two guards on patrol around the goat frequently, 24 hours a day along with a canine unit. 2020, guards, double fence, 24-hour uh, CCTV, public webcam feed survived. It did, it did get burned uh, this year. So the Natural Science Club goat was burned in the early hours of 12 December or December 12th. Uh, during the same weekend, a drunk person was caught trying to jump the fences around the larger goat. The larger goat burned in the early hours of December 17th. A uh, 40-year-old man was arrested. Doesn't explain any of the details to that. So someone, yeah, d- double fence, I like canine. <laughs> Go. So I was re- just perusing through these, and I, I like this this period right here. So 1971. So my understanding now, and I don't know, Murray you probably went through this, but there there was a group of people who built it originally, and then that was the Southern Merchants in 1971. The, it got smashed to pieces, and they fucking threw a hissy fit, and we're like, we're done with this shit. Everybody keeps destroying our goat. We're not building them anymore. And then the Natural Science Club of the School of Vasa decided to take over, take up the mantle, and they they started building them in 1971. So we fast forward to 1986 because I looked at 1986, obviously my birth year, and I was like, wonder what happened in 1986. The Southern Merchants got back into the goat game after the 1971 <laughs> hissy, hissy fit. Right? They get back into the goat game only for the bitch to get burned like immediately. <laughs> so I think I fucking love this. I hope we talk about this every year for the rest of our lives because I hope so too. Magical. Yeah, and then, it is. And then go go well, for 1987 heavily fireproofed. <laughs> Method of destruction. You just go to Sweden. <laughs> Heavily fireproofed. Method of destruction. Fire. fire. Uh, <laughs> I, I do like 1988. It survived. And then notes. I don't see if you can make sense of this. Gamblers were for the first time able to gamble oh, on the fate nice. of the goat with English book yeah. ma- bookmakers. Yeah, yes. Perfect sense. Yeah. They, okay. they, they already, obviously you can see there's a trend here. And so you've got house money versus, uh, you know, rolling the dice. And so people were like, okay, like our Swedish friend uh, Snake Snakebite uh, texts us, there's a 71% uh, destruction rate. Yeah. So they were like, all right, where's your money? There's odds to be made. They've got, they've got history. They've got numbers. They've got data. Uh, so that yeah. you can see over under, what's yeah. it going to survive? Uh, one <clears throat> year on the radio when I was really pushing my, uh, my gavel goat, Um, I gave away tickets. Um, I made my own goat. I can send you a picture. It was quite glorious. I made it out of cardboard and we had people go over under how long would it take for my goat to burn out in the field where the towers sit. And I burned a goat for Metallica tickets. Another year I had people put, uh, like, uh, you know, like bingo markers, like what day will the goat be burned? Or you could choose no day. And so... Somebody won because I was talking about it, and they called and they said, "Hey, man, check the live feed." And I checked the the closed circuit television camera, and the goat was on fire at five thirty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> five thirty our time. That's amazing. Yeah, nice. yeah. yeah. Plus, like English bookmakers will they set odds on literally fucking everything? Okay. I don't know if you guys understand how pervasive gambling is in England, uh, but it's a lot. Uh, like. So much so that, you know, we went to like our soccer games and at Newcastle, we were in, in, a, in a nice suite. They come around in the beginning of the game and at halftime and take your bets. Like <laughs> there's a there's a, a card on your place setting in the, at your table and they just like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's your yeah, fill, fill it in. Somebody will be around. Just pull out your pull out your cash and, and slap it on down. Take odds on anything, man. Well, I, d- I don't want, I mean, if we're going to be talking about this every year, obviously I want to leave some of the details for latter discussions. But if you're interested, Gavel, G-A-V-L-E, Christmas goat out of Sweden. What is it? Where is it usually erected? I don't know. Is I want to a go town? see it. Somewhere in Sweden. First, I can't pronounce the town. Uh, it's Gavel, Sweden. Gavel. It's a Gavel goat. Oh, that's that's right. the okay. town. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, by the way, check our check our messenger. I just sent you guys a uh, an image, and if actually screen share this if you if you could, um, it is an image of the goat that I erected 
out of cardboard, and I'd say it was about uh, two and a half, three feet tall by about, you know, I don't know, three feet long. <clears throat> and it was filled with uh, paper and wood, and that's what I lit on fire. I actually I spread a little bit of uh, uh, combustible fluid inside and let it dry just so it would definitely catch fire. Well, before, I it, <clears throat> before, I, uh, before I do that, the first, I'll have you uh, know that the first thing on my feed is uh, – from a page that I follow called Retro Wrestling All Stars, and it's The Rock uh, and J Lo, and The Rock's kind of like showing, like, "Hey, look at J Lo's rear end! Whew, it's glorious." Not going to show you though. All right, uh, here we go. I mean, look at the craftsmanship. I built this in my living room. Wow! Look at that. It's good. Looks pretty good. Even with the like little the, the 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 dangly ears back there, tape around them. Look at you. You got the little goatee coming down. Did, did you <laughs> I burn? think those are antlers. Did you burn it? Horn, horns? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's filled with, like, uh, that really rough, like, cardboard uh, packing paper kind of thing. Like, eh, similar to what the old paper bags were like at the grocery store. Tore them up, put them inside. Yeah, that, that fucker that fucker went ablaze. <laughs> well, middle class was everyone. Murr, Allen, and Foxman. And, hey, look, folks. Tis the season, uh, you know, and and as we did last year, we're going to do it again this year. We're going to start you off with a little bit of the reading from the Colonel. Well, sometime back around 1928, old David Thomas, my rival at the local gas station down the way, decided it would be quite humorous to go down and paint over top of my billboard. Well, I didn't take kindly to that, and after a brief scuffle, I shot him dead. And that was about the time I got my idea for the family combo platter dinner. I remember seeing the bird shot leave the end of that shotgun barrel, hitting David Thomas right in his chest and coming out the backside. I thought, hmm, look at that spread. <laughs> Alan's a big fan of this. Alan loves this. Great. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got uh, three more readings from the Colonel coming up here in the uh, the, the series of middle class holes, as well as uh, Adam's going to be joining us in a little bit for asking for a friend's uh, legal counsel. We got some things with Corona and COVID and uh, Home Alone and some of your favorite Christmas movies and some of the legal shenanigans that happen and all of that. Um, <clears throat> It was an article I wanted to bring up. There was a, uh, a study that involved 2,000 Brits. So I don't know how that, that relates here to us folks here in the States. But it said roughly people spend about 43 minutes a day cleaning up their house in preparation for Christmas. Um, some of that factored into whether or not uh, it was people cleaning up for other people coming over or just for your own family. Uh, do, do you guys clean up that much and prep for, for Christmas? Do you guys do enough... Dusting and sifting and lingering and hanging and burning. No. <laughs> just simply no. no. I mean, it's we do, we clean, but we don't spend like we don't. I don't know. We don't clean like throughout the like, you know, I don't spend 40. Maybe on maybe if we average it out. But, but I think we knocked this house out in like two hours on a fucking like Friday. And that's it. Okay. Here's what I do, Wes. <clears throat> I encourage and I get out of the way. And I don't know how long my <clears throat> wife specifically spends cleaning the house. It's probably longer than 43 minutes, but I can tell you I spend about 10 minutes. And it's just whatever she asks me to do. Hey, can you take yeah. this here? Right. Hey, can you run this down there? And I don't complain, don't protest. I just do it. I pause whatever it is I'm watching on the couch, and I immediately tend to her need and then I go right back to it. Yeah, I was gonna say, because whenever they need the man strength, you know, when they need a man's pull. Yeah. Can you lift this big fucking thing up and pull it over there? Hey, can you reach up somewhere I can't grab and pull that down or clean up there? Something like that. I yeah. get, is that, is that what you're talking about? Um, mm -hmm. No, I'm talking about mostly for me. It's the difficult task of saying, you know what? Ugh, the boy is just going to get in your way. So he and I, I'm going to take him downstairs and you do whatever you need to do up here. And then I spend about 45 minutes to an hour playing with Legos. Mm. Nice. And you make no, him. My, mine's make more him. like yours, Wes. I just carry things. Yeah. I take trash out. Uh, I pick up dog poop. 
I don't know. I, 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 we, I'm doing most of the cleaning while Sarah's doing some heavenly bacon in the kitchen. Mm. That's, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, not, yeah uh, that, dude, okay, all right. What What's she making this year? Uh, she's got well. The thing of it is, because we're 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 not going to be here here for Christmas, but she she is still making make, something. Yeah, she it's going to be uh uh <clears throat> stuffed uh stuffed cupcakes. So it's going to be like Christmas glaze with like a Emmy. like a like a Christmas inside. So sort of what goo. the fuck does that mean? What does that so mean? Like, like a cupcake? Okay, go get, get Sarah. We don't we don't need you for this part. <laughs> no, go okay, get. wait, hold on, wait, wait, wait. I just, <laughs> one, I don't appreciate the indignant look you just gave us. Like, what do you mean? You just said it's going to be a Christmas glaze okay, so, with a so, Christmas stuffing. So it, it, because cupcakes get glazed first of all. Oh. So stop there. <laughs> All I saw, I didn't ask any questions. I was like, hmm, hmm, babe, what do you got going on? Like, I, I saw the ingredients. It's going to be cupcakes. It's going to have like a green topping to it with some sprinkles or some other fucking Christmassy shit. But it's not, but the inside of it is going to be stuffed with some sort of glitter, green, red goo. I don't know. Christmassy shit. <laughs> it's there <snare> down here. <laughs> She's probably going to do some fucking peanut butter brownies, too. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. And then while that's all going on, I'll do some cleaning. But we're gonna we're leaving here, so I, I'm not I'm not too terribly worried. But I I will say this is this is interesting. Three in ten claim to spend more time cleaning over Christmas uh, than actually enjoying the celebrations. Um, then also emerged half are guilty of judging other people's home when visiting over the festive period. That's dick. Well, it is and it, it isn't. I mean, he, he, because I don't clean, I don't. Everybody judges, though, right? True, right? Yeah, right. I, I don't mean, think you can help yourself, but I think you. I think in retrospect, like you think to yourself, "Yeah, but would I have cleaned that shit up?" Nah, it's cool. Like if you, if, okay, let's say you go in the bathroom and there's like, a, like there's some toothpaste droppings in the sink. You're like, "Fuck, man, fucking toothpaste droppings!" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, I got like fifty of those in mine." <laughs> nah, it's fine. Like you know what I mean? Like you judge, and then it passes, and you don't worry about it anymore. I th I've always felt, <clears throat> unless your house is, I mean, I certainly would say, damn, you knew people were coming over. You invited us over and you couldn't like, you couldn't do that because I know I hold myself to a standard where if I'm going to invite some people over, I'm doing some cleaning up. But if I'm washing my hands and I see like a t some crest r lining the little silver part dra in the drain, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's fucking dick. <sighs> He didn't even use the Christmas stuff. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm with you. I don't. It doesn't really matter how. I don't care. You're, you're gonna. If you want to judge my house, I get the fuck out. As a matter of fact, like, uh, you know, I don't give a shit. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't care much for other people's opinions of me, though. So it doesn't really like. I, I might be the wrong guy to ask in this equation, but I do not like. Like, my thing is like clutter, like. And we have hardwoods, and like I'm one of those people that like like my wife wears like slippers and shit. I'll walk around barefoot, or I'll walk around in socks and shit. And so hardwoods, you feel like every little, every little fucking piece of dirt. So I do take charge of like sweeping, and we have a we have a Roomba, but he's a fucking idiot. Um, so <laughs> he's fucking useless. Uh, so yeah, I do. I take charge of sweeping. I sweep like one, you know, like once a week, maybe maybe twice. Depends on depends on how messy it's getting, and then I do a do a nice little mop and get those hardwood shining up nice. Yeah, do you do, do you do a uh, normal straight old school mop or do you have the uh, Swiffer Wet Jet? No, oh, I mean we do have a Swiffer Wet Jet, but it's it's fucking also useless. Um, so I disagree. No. I think the Swiffer the Swiffer the Swiffer sweeper and the Swiffer not not the Wet Jet. They they make just these little like one use like uh, pads. You just put them mm -hmm. fuckers on and yeah. you go over. Oh, we, they're a godsend. We do use them from time to time, like for a spot. That's a that's a quick like spot clean, like you know what I mean. Uh, but I will like bust out like the bucket and like it's it's not like a fucking janitor's mop. It's like the old like block of foam. You know what I'm talking about? Mop that you just kind of wring out and squeeze. But yeah, it gets the job done. Get some Murphy's oil in there. Shine that mm. wood up nice. Damn straight. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I do have to admit, and I, I forgot that we were actually going to be talking about this, but there's the threat. There's the threat of your brother coming over, Wes. And for literally like three years now, I thought, okay, I had, I had a leak coming from the bathroom, and I didn't know how to find the leak. 
And so I call my brother, and he's like, oh, you got to get in the wall. I'm like, all right, yeah, but it's got to go through tile. I'm like, yeah, well, you want to call a plumber? Yeah, I should probably call a plumber. He's like, all right, well, he's going to car- charge you about 100 bucks an hour. Ah, damn. And what's he going to do? He's going to smash through your tile. So he's like, so you can either smash through your tile for free, or you can just have somebody else do it for you for 100 bucks an hour. It's like, God damn it. So I smashed through the tile in my bathroom, getting through the wall. Of course, that's not where the leak was coming from. But for about three years, I've had a hole in my bathroom wall right where the uh, like right where the knobs are for the shower. Mm-hmm. And so the threat of your brother coming over, I'm like, fuck, man. I got to do something about this hole in the wall. So I, never having done drywall, never having done tile, never having done grout, just so happened to find tile putty grout in my house. I guess I bought it like three years ago and just never did anything about it. And then I found a spare piece of drywall, and I fucking did it, and it's fucking perfect. Mm. And, you know, it, it's funny that you would get so inspired to do so for someone so unjudgy, like fucking Dewey Fox. But fair enough. Hey, man. <laughs> I, to each his own. It's not even your brother. It's, <clears throat> it's not. Here it is. Here you go. This is the three degrees of cleaning up. It's all about guilt. And this is why anybody cleans their house, because I agree with you 100%. Because if I was coming down to see you and you didn't touch a goddamn thing in the house and there was a fresh cat turd on the floor, mm-hmm. I wouldn't judge you anyone. Well, I would I've judge myself because my I don't have a fucking cat. So I'd wonder what the fuck happened. <laughs> right? <laughs> what? <laughs> I think about the time we spent in your basement and I can think about the times that your brother slept on a couch that had active mold growing on it and the amount of beer cans and filth that were piled up in a corner, mm-hmm. a baseball that probably should have been sent to the Centers for Disease Control that was just, like, growing all sorts of diseases on it inside of a sump pump that people pissed in. <laughs> and I tell my wife all the time, like, we don't have to touch this house. There is no judgment coming from Dewey Fox. <laughs> and it's all because her perception of what his perception will be that is false because she doesn't know the man as well as I do. Yeah, yeah, it's it it is very tough to I think in your shoes to say, "Hey, listen, wife or Maria in this case, this guy, this guy's this guy's not going to give a fuck." I mean, barring that we don't have chickens in the fucking house clucking around eating and shitting everywhere, he's probably going to be like, "Oh, yeah, this is good." But like from there's something about Mary when they when they go into that apartment or condo. They said, cool. And there's, there's, there's dog shit on the ground. So it was like, holy hell, what the hell happened here? Someone took a shit in this place. And then the uh, pizza delivery driver comes in and goes, God, yeah, nice place. Looks good. You know, that's kind of what you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, I know. I know what I'm going to get. But, you know, it's all about making her happy. That's right. Uh, so that's all it is. <clears throat> some of the top 10 places that, uh, Brits would judge in this thing. One dirty toilet, uh, messy and dirty sink, overflowing bin, messy bathroom, dirty shower or bath, general clutter, sticky floor, mess on the sides slash surfaces, dirty dishes, and then the smell of pets. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those are all reasonable, I think. Those are like the hot spots. Right. You know, minus maybe like some general clutter. I mean, I like I said, I don't like clutter, but it depends on what you mean. Like... I'm going to have clutter if you walk into my house now. We got fucking Christmas presents. Right. That shit's clutter to me. You know what I mean? Um, shit like that. But, like, yeah, I'll clean my bathroom. I give the toilet a scrub. Like, you know, I don't want people coming over, go to take a piss, and there's a big old fucking, like, shit stain. <laughs> you know, it's, it's un, that's uncouth. You know what I mean? You just pee, <laughs> you just pee that sucker off. That's well, what you do. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes you got a doozy in there. <laughs> you, you might have. But but you might have had one in, in midweek came out like fucking hot asphalt. You know what I mean? You gotta get gotta get some elbow grease in there. <laughs> that is the one. That's I think that's the only one I really truly agree with. Is like the dirty toilet because that just means like like oh you put no preparation in this visit zero. <laughs> yeah, that's like the easy part. You put yeah. some the, pre- you put some preparation H up in this bitch. <laughs> the, the here's here's one where I feel like it's on the guest if you. If the shower's dirty, you shouldn't know about it unless you're staying the night. Because if I know if my shower's dirty, or if I have a hole in the wall that's been there for three years, I'm just simply closing the shower curtain, and you're none the wiser unless you're snooping like a motherfucker. Unless you're staying the night, you shouldn't give a shit about anything else but the toilet, the sink, 
and I guess the general clutter. But I got a seven year old man. The house is permanent general clutter. I and I kind of semi. I'm not saying I, I agree with you, not <clears throat> in totality, but I disagree with you in part about staying the night because I don't know, man. You stay the night, get your ass out in the morning. You need to be fucking taking a shower at my place. Get the fuck on out of here. Okay, nah, that's, that's fair too. You're just unless you're here for like an extended my... period. If you're here yeah. for like a weekend. Okay, but then I'm cleaning my house because I'm having you know I'm having a house guest at right. that point. If you come over for like a cut, like if I went over and drank a couple beers and fucking recorded a podcast with Wes, I wasn't a house guest. I was just kind of there. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> yeah. I didn't <clears throat> got to clean up for me. That's why when, when, when Alan went and took a piss last time, he was like, damn, someone shit up in this bathroom. Woo! <laughs> Turns all over the toilet. <laughs> I can't pee him away. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, man. Um, this is coming out of people. I enjoy this one. This is good. Murrow, thank you for sending this. Uh, Kraft will pay you $20 to not make cheesecake this holiday season amid a cheesecake shortage. So, first of all, uh, show of hands, anyone know there was a cheesecake shortage? No. Okay. Uh, It's not a cheesecake shortage. It's a uh, cream Cream cheese. cheese Cream cheese shortage. shortage. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Show of hands. Did you know there was a cream cheese shortage? Well, I mean, it, we're part of a cause of it because there's a whole fucking shelf of Philadelphia <laughs> in my for, refrigerator right now for Kelly's holiday bacon purposes. So <laughs> I don't think Kraft is giving us shit. I'm just saying. Here's my whole point, And this is why I sent you the fucking article. I don't think there's a cream cheese shortage. I think that Kraft knows that there are shortages in general happening across the country. And I think what they're doing is saying, hey, there's a cream cheese shortage, so don't make any cheesecake. Which means everybody's going to bum rush the store because everybody's a selfish asshole American. And they're going to buy all the cream cheese they can for themselves. So, okay, so why would they offer people $20 to not do it? Because that doesn't create a dent in their, uh, their bottom line. Well, when I went to go claim my $20, because I ain't baking a fucking cheesecake because I'm a lazy motherfucker. There were no more $20 vouchers to give away. Ooh, how convenient, Craft fucking yeah. services, whatever the fuck you like, want to call uh, yourselves. I think there were like 18,000 total, is what I read. 8,000, yeah. first come, first serve basis. Well, oh, well shit. there was 10,000 right. first, and then 8,000 more. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you did read the article. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yep. <laughs> okay, so what's the total number? How many vouchers did they have? 18,000. 18, okay, I'm going to do the math. Times 20 equals... That's three hundred sixty thousand dollars. How much advertising did they get off of this fucking article that's been shared by me, by you, by Alan, by all over the fucking place? How much? How much free advertising did Kraft get for this? And then also, how much extra uh, cream cheese did they sell because people were scared? It's just like the toilet paper shortage, man. When it comes down to oh, you can't have it anymore. Well, I don't really need toilet paper, but I'm gonna fucking fill my pantry full of it because I might not get some tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's the threat. It's the threat of not giving. I'll add, another, not giving. I'll another, I'll add another level to Murr's conspiracy here. <clears throat> and then people are going to bum rush and buy out all of the existing cream cheese. And then they're going to hold some supply and like a month later, drop it on us at a raised price. After the new year? Yeah, most of that, yeah, definitely. Right, when, when raises they're gonna come ju- in, they're gonna wait until probably just- like uh, like Valentine's time. You know when 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 we're like trying to force feed our ladies fucking cheesecake for for you know to accept our love. Um, <laughs> the, the, they're just gonna be like, yeah, get, buy that buy that cheesecake. Guess, guess how much that slice is now? Fucking thirty dollars. It's basically a crab cake. Here's a cream cheese crab cake. <laughs> Yeah. No, Alan's 100% right because I've already read that, you know, companies are like already saying, well, you know, because of the shortages, we're going to be raising prices. This gives Kraft the ability to raise the price on their cream cheese and then blame it on us, the consumer, for simply buying it. Mm. Fuck them. Kraft has their fingers in everything. If you want to Wikipedia something, Wikipedia, the Kraft company, okay, they don't just make crackers and cream cheeses. They're diversified. They got their hands in damn near everything that we touch. Kraft, Nabisco, 
and what is it uh, Unilever own pretty yeah. much everything you have in your house. Unilever's so brazen Unilever. that if you look at that goddamn U, it ha- it has a little teeny tiny picture to make up the U of everything that they make. And let me tell you something. It's like a thousand little fucking dots. Yeah. It's toothbrushes. It do it's razor everything. blades. It's douche. It's condoms. It's, it's fucking- yeah. anything that would be in uh, fucking like, you know, health and beauty uh, in the, you know, that section of the Walmart fucking that's that's the Unilever. That's all cra- the, the under the Kraft umbrella. What's the parent company? Well, is it Kraft? No, I, th- I don't. I think Kraft is its own thing. Okay. I think Kraft's Kraft- its own thing, but Kraft is like also like Gillette. Your razor blades, mm. your foams, your let's let's not remember Kraft is Kraft Heinz. So everything that's Heinz too, you know, like Kraft, he's right. Every like Kraft is in everything. It's like Kellogg's. You know, Kellogg's had this protest going on, and then we're like, guess what, suckers? We're just going to take the Kellogg's label off of everything, and you're going to have to guess because we got so much fucking shit. <laughs> Good luck, fuckers. Like, <laughs> like basically, they were like, we're going to take it off Pop Tarts. Were you going to stop eating Pop Tarts? <laughs> yeah, right, American. Fucking get out of here. So. Kellogg's, know, they all know what they're doing. It's like Frito-Lay, too. Well, by the way, and I know I sent you guys this picture. I was in Walmart, and I was shopping, and it was like uh, they, they took Uncle Ben, the picture, off of the rice. I think it's just called, like, Ben's Rice or some shit now. But I'm like, hold on. This black man sold this rice to me my entire goddamn life. And the only thing that they stole... Was the black man who I have a genuine affinity for. I love Uncle Ben. I'm sorry that some woke motherfuckers decided that you were a racial epithet or something like that. Yeah. But I was genu- genuinely like disappointed. Like, where's my sweet Uncle Ben? I miss that motherfucker. That motherfucking rice was better with you on it. And then Aunt Jemima. I'm looking at my pancake mix. And now it's just some fucking like... I, 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 what what's that thing that they put on the river with like the 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 wheel that the river turns? It's just like some kind of mill. I'm like, what is this? Where's my sweet aunt Jemima? Oh, word, that's weird. I haven't even seen the new one yet. Yeah, it's like old mill. It's it's called like old mill or some oh, some horse shit like that. Earl Milling Company. Yeah, something. and oh, and dear. as much as. I never thought it was racist. I just thought some like sweet old black woman was like feeding me pancakes and it gave me joy. Right, well, here's... I think like I think if it would have just been like Jemima's syrup, I think it's because they were like aunt and uncle. Because that was like the old timey affectionate word for look at our fucking house slave yeah. that we have. She makes delicious maple syrup. And Jemima, you're such a part of the family. There's, Please sleep uh, at the outhouse. Uncle <laughs> and then a very Americanized first name come down. Came, I'm, I'm not going to say it. But uh, <clears throat> they could have gone like cousin or brother, Ben. <laughs> right? Is that what yeah. worked? Well, it's just no. Ben's rice now. <laughs> Aunt Jemima's has just totally changed. There ain't, Jemima's totally off. Yeah, but it's Ben's rice, but where the fuck's Ben? You could have left Ben on the goddamn box. That's fair. Yeah. Could have made, could have made it new, like a like a more sleek uh, kind of but as stylish I look, Ben. As I look at the as the I look neck. at the Ben, like just the headshot of Uncle Ben. I mean, it's pretty minstrel showy. Uh, even <laughs> though he's like, you know what I mean? Like it looks, it's very not, it's very caricature of a black man. Uh, okay, and and that's and that's that's a fair assessment. Uh, Aunt Jemima used to wear, uh, you know, like a bandana on her head. They took that off of her, and that's fine too. I don't mind that. I just think that, like, okay, here you go. When I go to buy, oh, man, this is going to sound bad, but I'm going to do it anyway here. When I go to buy a delicious seasoned chicken breading, I look for the box that has a black man on it. It's fair. Because they make food that tastes better than the white man. It's not racist. It's just reality facts it's it's facts what do you always say about white people and their food alan shit's bland bro it's mad mad unseasoned so (laughs) am i gonna go in there looking for like i don't know cousin jimmy's like chicken breading no i will say i don't know i don't know if it's ethnic or not but you know i wasn't really an uncle ben's guy i was more of a zadrans uh i like my i like my rice cajun uh, I like my rice from the panhandle. Yeah. Uh, so 
you know, I, that, I don't take that for what it's worth. I don't know what ethnicity Zatarain's is, but it That's appears to true. also have a caricature of a black man playing a fucking like clarinet on it. So, <laughs> they just, yeah. They, yeah, but they just went with the shadow. They were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were like, is he black? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So hey, but before we uh, get away from this, uh, there, there were I did look up substitutions for cream cheese. You ready okay. for these? Oh, I am so Probably ready. Not. All right, there's ten yeah. of them, and I want to get your uh, opinions on them. Okay, first off, number Definitely. one, cottage cheese. Gross. Okay, Greek yogurt. Why? I mean, Greek yogurt's good, but it's probably gross. All right, just use it as a substitute. <laughs> Ricotta. Uh, so, rica- I've had ricotta a cheesecake. It's delicious, but it's different. Like, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have ever tried it. Uh, Maybe I have. I don't know. It's a little bit. It's less sweet, obviously. Um, it's bland. It's water cheese. It That's is blander. Is. It is fucking blander. I'm not going to lie. But it's not bad. Uh, That'd be okay. That would be okay. That's acceptable. Was it, okay, so I, I may fuck this up. Is it uh, mascarpone? mascarpone? Well, you, well mascarpone. mascarpone you actually use in concert with cream cheese if you're making a real cheesecake. Cheesecake. That's okay. True. So if you just use a bunch of it, that's perfectly fine. Okay. All right. Uh, then we start getting a little uh, little silly. All right. Oh, God. Hummus. <laughs> did you, wait, did you say hummus? Yeah. No. Okay. That's not happening. Uh, all right. Kefir with chia seeds. Oh, kefir. Kefir, no. yeah, uh, yeah, no, kefir. No, no, nope, nope. Uh, first of all, nothing with chia seeds. That shit's fucking. Chia seeds gross me the fuck out. They get all fucking slimy and shit. Mm, nope. Well, uh, that's why they're pets in most people's houses. <laughs> that's also, if you ever if you ever want to freak some people out, like uh, or make them think that like something's wrong or they're unsanitary, just sprinkle a couple of chia seeds somewhere in someone's home, uh, and they will sprout. And yes, they they'll will. See, they'll see green and be like, what the fuck? Uh, and they're pretty harmless. That's why you can sprinkle them on a Mr. T ceramic head and they will grow as long as you dump a little water on them. I prefer <laughs> Richard Simmons, but either way. I had a Homer Simpson one once. Grew, grew yeah. really well. Um, I, I'm actually lying about that because I've never had a Chia Pet. So if anybody's looking for a Christmas gift, I've always <laughs> been in the market. <laughs> it is way harder to do than it looks on TV. Chia. All right, so this I'm again. <clears throat> it's a uh, French. It's got one of those uh, triangles over the name, but it's Neufchatel. Neufchatel. N e u f c h a t e l. Fuck the French. French. They've gotten away <laughs> with well, having a fancy way of saying words for way too long. It's not that good. It's just sounds sexy. It says it's a soft, spreadable cheese. Okay, uh, silken tofu. Yeah, nope. fuck you. Nope, don't know How what that is. You. Don't even say those words. Yeah, no, tofu Look, is all you got to say, and I'm out. Listen, I watched a documentary <laughs> one time about cheese, because I'm that guy. And there's a reason that Kraft bought the Philadelphia company's creamed cheese. Because they went through, they have, they have a massive war chest bank account, and this is their gig. They go around the country, especially like 50, 60 years ago, and they just tasted shit. And they're like, this shit's good. How do you make it? And they're like, we're not telling you. And they're like, how about if I open this briefcase? How do you make it? And they're like, can I have a document to sign? Yes, you can. Here you go. 1% residuals, half percent. Deal. And then they buy it. That's why Kraft is who they are. Gotcha. Fair enough. Yes. Uh, we got two more. Cashew cheese. All right. How is cashew? Cashews don't have nipples. They don't make milk. Therefore, there's no cheese. There's just simply cashews that have been pulverized and mixed with fucking some sort of creamy substance. Yeah. Uh, it is typically made from cashews, uh, natural yeast, a mix of herbs and spices. Cashew cheese, a cashew. Oh, fuck, I'm having a tough time saying it. Cheese provides substantial fiber and protein in each serving. Fuck it. All right, we're going to the last one. Yeah, because I want, I want, I want to get healthy from my fucking cheesecake. Actually, there's three more. Sorry, uh, two more. Um, sour cream. I hate sour cream in general, so no. I like sour cream. I guess if you dumped enough sugar in there, it's similar. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would work, but now I'm out on that too. Okay, and then this, I have no idea. It's cork. 
Q U A R K. Quark. Yeah, it's a creamy, spreadable cheese. It's popular in many regions Quark of Europe. Cheese. I've never heard of it as a cheese. I know of it as like a fragment of an atom. You can use it in cheesecakes, yeah. frostings, cookies, sauces, sauces, spreads. Whew. Man, yeah. sounds kind of quirky to me. I like it. I'm in. I think we found our winner. <laughs> I hate you that, so it's, much. Is a, it is a mild creamy cheese without the sour taste of yogurt. Yeah. So, d- yeah there you go. Don't give up, man. We have a cork tree cream cheese coming your way tomorrow, buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ask your ask your local grocer if they have any quark on the shelves. <laughs> hey, you guys got any fresh quark? He'll be like, get out. How about some cashew cheese? No? Well, that, that you'll probably find. You can find that at like a Whole Foods. 100%. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, it does. So, okay, so it's a big conspiracy. Um, the the cheese isn't run out. Kraft just understands how people fucking think and feel and understand that the holidays, they need to make it perfect. They need to clean their houses. They need to make cheesecakes with Kraft cheese. We're fucking, we're dying to live in a capitalist society, both literally yeah. and figuratively. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> if, you, if you weren't planning on making a, a cheesecake this holiday season... You're probably more likely to make a cheesecake this holiday season. I know I am because I'm a sucker and I bought myself some craft fucking Philadelphia cream cheese to make a goddamn cheesecake that's probably going to go moldy in my fridge because I'm too lazy to actually make the thing itself. Mm, yeah. yeah. Nah, there's about to be so many black bottoms coming out of this kitchen in the next like 24 hours. So they literally like a half a fucking shelf in this fr- refrigerator is just two packs of fucking Philadelphia cream. Like I tried to get some eggs the other day and it took me like 15 minutes just to move the leg the Lincoln log setup of fucking Philadelphia cream cheese in the refrigerator. It's obscene, actually. <clears throat> um, last little bit before we get to we're uh, getting away from Christmas stuff before we get to asking for a friend. So, I don't know. Here's the thing. Three dudes on the middle class holes. And when we get into feminist or feminine conversations, we usually kind of we usually kind of get, get derailed. But here's the deal. Front to back wiping. Okay? When a woman urinates, uh, apparently that's the way to go. Front to back. And this has caused a big stir. A lot of people have said, I didn't even know you were supposed to do that. This isn't about peeing, man. This is about pooping. It's about poop? Uh, yeah. I didn't see anything about defecating. But maybe it's a two for one. It's about poop. Okay. Is did it you that? read the article? Yeah, it's about poop. I uh, did. I didn't, I, I didn't say anything about peeing or pooping. It just said a lot of people said I wasn't sure that's what you were supposed to do. I'm going to hit control F and type poop. <laughs> nope, nothing. Oh, of course, they're not going to write poop in the article. Was it defecating? The, 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 you, went, you went with the most Neanderthal version of what we're talking about to the most sophisticated version. So neither of, of those. Well, I did DEF and it's definitely. That's the only thing on the page. The uh, bowel, <clears throat> bowel movement would probably be more likely... Okay, oh, so God damn it. for sake of My the conversation, just we'll died. just we'll just go we'll just go with both. That's fine. Why don't you read? Right, watch, right. No, 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 because this is a universal article. Because everybody, I watch the TikTok videos of what this woman is. Go ahead, just Front read to the back article. wiping uh, your vagina is a huge conversation on TikTok right now. Here's why and what experts explain. Uh, hello, people with vaginas. Now, some of you may uh, <laughs> may us. have been taught as little kids that using after using the restroom, you should always wipe front to back, from front to back. And if you weren't taught it as a kid, then I am sure at some point in your adolescent or adult life, you have learned. Um, but then they add, yeah, they got a cream, cream of course, cheese. Because a woman wrote the goddamn article, so it's got to go on for forty minutes. But enter the place full of laughs and TMI TikTok, and you'll uh, quickly see that it's a hot topic of discussion. Uh, the above TikTok uh, user da-da-da-da says. Quote, I know we're supposed to wipe front to back, but how the fuck do you do it? Uh, that's what I want to know, because I've always done it like uh, gestures wiping back to front. Do you stand the fuck up and just reach? Like, am I flexible? How? I need an explanation. So that's 
This is where that's kind of where. I, okay, now this video has been viewed over a million times, but comments are filled with people who feel the same way. Uh, and user that spicy lemon caught the attention of uh, even more people, 3.5 million to be exact. She, she explained how the female anatomy is constructed into white front to back. Do you guys want to see it? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, is there a diagram? Because uh, yeah, let's, 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 let's watch this individual perform. Oh, I know okay. we're supposed to wipe like front to back, but how the fuck do you do it? Well, you just Honestly, did it. I have no it's... fucking idea how we're supposed to wipe front to back when our anatomy is literally not constructed to do so. Like, I'm sorry, but how the fuck am I supposed to get up from the toilet and then reach around like this. I look like a fucking like a, crazy person. Like exactly no, obviously, like that. I fucking understand. Like from the back to the front. Like, you have to know where your taint is. You have to know where your fucking taint is. Like, if you've been going to the bathroom for as long as I have, you know where your fucking taint is and you know where the no-no place is. Like, you're not going to wipe from your asshole all the way to your coochie. Right. Like, all you right. know where the... where the. All right. All right. We got pause. Yeah. We got pause. Yeah, I think the fundamental right. problem here, and this is, look, we ain't women. So here's where, here's where, you know, some things come into play. I think that the back to front is all about, like, the perception. So, like, if you're wiping your vagina, the back of your vagina, all right, stay with me here. If you're wi wiping your vagina, the back of your vagina is the part at the taint. The front of your vagina, I would consider to be the top near your clitoris. And, and and the exposed world. So back to front, wiping pee, like, get get on down there, come on up. That makes sense to me on the vagina. Why yeah. they're not understanding the back to front, like, the pooping. Or, or the front to back pooping makes no sense <laughs> because they're doing it. They're literally being like, this is how you should wipe. Like, that's it. So yes. I think they're just, they're mixing up. You know, it's two different things, and it's it's you know it's a it's a butt wipe and it's a vagina wipe. We don't have a vagina wipe, so we don't know the intricacies of it. But I think they're just messing up this the the semantics. Well, there's a, there is another video of of someone breaking it down. So let me see. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's this go. is a doctor, by the way, and this oh, is where well, I think I got. Yeah. Let's do that. No, we're oh, supposed well, to wipe. Oh uh, like, damn! Front, front, no, 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 wait, no, no. This is it. This is it. This is it. She's okay. responding I'm to the physical therapist, and I'm going to teach you how to wipe from front to back. So take your toilet paper. Okay, go to the front and then push to the back. But, but come from the front because that makes the most sense and it's so easy. Okay, I'm gonna warm up for this one. Okay, single oh, leg. Oh, fuck me. I mean, I can do it. I can definitely do it. I mean, don't get me wrong. You could get like complicated with it and you can like- No, it's not complicated. No. And, like, Work, like, work the back, like get a good stretch in while you're doing it. You could definitely do that. You could even get some like single leg balance and go with your non-dominant hand and you can like go there to there. I mean, that, that definitely works. I was kind of messing around and like oh, I, I went Christ. to a deep squat and it actually, when you deep squat like this, you can do it. Like it, it reaches really easily. I mean, uh, this works too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think we get the point. <laughs> you see and this is another another thing about it is maybe we're just missing like we're missing we can't conceive of the concern of potentially wiping like poo into our vagina because true. we have a physical bear like it's like oh well that's my balls yeah probably probably should stop wiping poo this way no not that i wipe poo in that direction anyway right but you know what i mean we have a physical barrier they, they you know they go from from hole to hole uh, so and, and if you get a little poo on your balls, hey, man, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you stop in the shower. <laughs> Good to go. Here's the thing, though. Okay. Now, I, I, we can get into wiping techniques if you like. Um, but she go, she starts talking about the deep squat, right? You're on the toilet. Is there a deeper squat than that? And you've got a, you got a thing to hold you up. So if you're really concerned, then just scooch forward on the seat a little bit. And then just reach behind. Like, I can, I'm touching, I'm sitting where I'm sitting right now, and I'm basically touching my asshole. Like, I'm right there. Like, mm -hmm. that is not a, there, there yeah. is, there's not a lot of gymnastics going on with this procedure. Second point is, toilet paper is very absorbent. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever tried to wipe up a spill with toilet paper. You might as well just, like, 
crumble up toilet paper and throw it all over your bathroom because as soon as it touches water, it disintegrates. Here's the thing. Why are they wiping in the first place? If it's pee, just dab. A hard dab. Maybe a hard dab and a press. Yeah. It's, and then just... Good point. Good point. Y- y- there's no reason to wipe that. I just, maybe that's why I was confused about it being poop. I don't see yeah. why you have to wipe pee. Just and if we go back away. to if we go back to like what she said to do, which is like, first of all, she had it balled up. So I'm or I'm already kind of out because I'm a, I'm a I'm a rap I'm a rapper. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I'm I'm a lyricist. <laughs> I'm fucking on an island right now. I'm fucking out in space, but I'm trying to stick with it. So she's like, you know, go ahead and push that on down. So like, if you do it that method, like front to back, like she said, aren't you just like whatever might not get absorbed by your fucking balled up piece of toilet paper? Wouldn't you just be pushing like pee to your taint? Like, yeah, but pee you know to your I mean? taint, <clears throat> pee sterile. Poo is yeah, not. no, I know. But like, it just seems it just seems weird. Like I'm spreading the pee versus like drying it up and wiping it up. Whereas okay. I think you could just be like, Yoop. do you have a uh, alternative? Do you have some sort of uh, oh, compromise? No. I don't have a vagina, so you know, do whatever you want, ladies. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a physical barrier before I shit my balls. So <laughs> I'm aware. I can't help you. <laughs> I just know I do a combo. While I, like, I don't have a vagina. However, when I wipe my ass, before I stand up, I take one piece of toilet paper and I go kind of down the the, the, top, the high end crack to the middle and then I just let go and it falls in the toilet. And mm. then I stand up and then I wipe front to back and get the rest. And, you know, a- and this is why I, I talk about the dab method. It's because now that I've been utilizing the bidet, once mm-hmm. I squirt that water, which I would assume stimulates the pee, I just I do Alan's method. I do a full wrap around the hand, maybe three or four times, and then I just flatten that shit out in the palm of the, my right hand, and I just dab it until I just hold it there. I literally hold it there until I feel wetness touch my hand, and then I throw it away, mm. and I'm dry, mm. and we're done. Seventeen. So I don't understand why they're not using seventeen the flaps method. toilet paper later. Dunzo. Well, I mean, we got a lot to learn. We need to get a lady on the show. That's what's going to have to happen. I was like, yeah, we should probably have talked to a woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a, this a thought. They would just overcomplicate the conversation, just like they're overcomplicating the toilet paper to the vagina. That's yeah, right. They would. They would definitely start talking about crazy shit. Before we get to uh, uh, asking for a friend, we got one more reading for um, Colonel Sanders. I do believe the year was 1918 and the world was in quite the tizzy over that pesky pandemic going round. Well, business was down and I set myself a barrel of 40 gallons of chicken grease on fire. The smell and aroma just wafting through the air. People couldn't help but take their masks off that day. I doubled my profits by Wednesday. The death toll on Friday was, I will say, unreasonable. (laughs) Around the time I was... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. The colonel's a fucking savage. <laughs> asking oh, for a, asking for a friend coming up. We aren't doctors, but we'd love to take a look at some more of the middle class holes. <laughs> Welcome back to the middle class holes, Mer Allen Fox Man, of course. One of our favorite guests, Mr. Adam Calvert, on one of our favorite segments, asking for a friend. Adam, you look very festive. Did you do the decorations behind you? I did. I did. I got the tree. I, I, I Christmas and Thanksgiving, I take very seriously around here. Yeah. Uh, the tree gets a little bigger every year. Uh, Thanksgiving, I make a whole a whole spread. Like there's 12 people coming, even though it's just me and my wife. So I, I love the holidays. So. You said you you the tree gets a little bigger every year. I'm going to say that star looks a little tilted. Is that actually nudging the roof of your apartment there? Oh no no. So uh, the tree is probably like six and a half, maybe six and a half feet. I think the ceilings are ten. It's just the angle. Oh you know? okay okay. All right maybe maybe, maybe I a bird not a bird's eye view. Okay whatever. I'll take your word for it. Shit mm-hmm. straight. It's definitely not a bird's eye view. I, you don't know what a bird's eye view is. Like a is worm's that, eye view. Yes, no. it is. It's like when a bird, he lands on the ground. He's looking up. It's a bird's <laughs> eye view. All right. Okay. Fair point. <laughs> well, let's get, let's get to it. 
asking for a friend, the holiday edition slash COVID edition. Uh, we've got two COVID stories to get you started off with. Um, by the way, how's New York City doing uh, with the COVID? Are you guys um, under martial law yet? <laughs> no, I, I don't think they want to close the city down after what they went through before. Um, they're going to do everything they can to keep it open. But testing lines are just like around the block everywhere. I, I, I don't even bother. Good. Yeah, that's the spirit. Uh, that's the same same way down here in uh, in Charm City, Baltimore. So I actually had to pay money to get mine done today. Damn. Yeah, they're supposed to be free. One hundred ten bucks, America, baby. <laughs> well, here's the good news, though. Um, we have a couple solutions for those of you who do not want to get your vaccine this holiday season. There was a fifty year old man. We discussed this uh, a couple days ago or last week. Fifty uh, year old man in Rome. He tried to pass off a silicone arm as his own at a COVID-19 vaccination clinic in northern Italy in an attempt to get a vaccine certificate without actually getting inoculated. Now, I know this is in a foreign country, but if someone were to do that here in the States, uh, is there any is there any penalty? Is there, um, I don't know, like, uh, what do you call it when you fake your own identity? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he's not faking his identity, but he's definitely trying to pull a fast one on the medical community yeah i mean it's like uh if you went and applied for a fake passport right uh that's what i would liken it to or i don't know you used uh let's say you did a uh, like prosthetics and makeup and things like that on your face so you could take a, a, a different passport for a photo and get a fake passport or something like that i guess the only thing here that the, the difference is that there's the vaccines here are done state by state so it really depends on the state. And I know here in New York, there are laws against you know, faking a vaccine card or selling a vaccine card, things like that. But I, I think it, it probably varies state to state for, for something like this. Well, considering that this is, uh, th- this is new ground, okay? This is unhoed earth, if you will. Um, what would the charge be, do you think? Because you're not faking your identity if you're using a fake arm. You're faking your body part. <laughs> like, what, 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 I mean, obviously it would be some sort of fraud charge or would it be an identity charge? Hmm. Well, I think it would be fraud because it's like you're trying to obtain the vaccine card, right? Without actually having to do the vaccine. So it's just like defrauding somebody by, you know, to, to obtain some sort of, information or some, or some sort of um, material good, something like that, uh, by false pretenses. Yeah, it's, Which I, one would, I was going to say it's kind of tough because there's no what we there's no legal precedent, right? So you're kind of having to pick and choose what this might be. I, I what, what came to mind for me is like a fake ID. If you get caught mm-hmm. with someone else's ID trying to get into a bar or purchase uh, uh, alcohol or beer, um, but this, in this case, it might be more severe. I, I simply don't know. Maybe they're they're slapping the wrist a little harder. They're using rulers instead of their hands. Well, I guess it wouldn't bother that guy because he's got a prosthetic arm. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! I was going to say when he's <laughs> – last time I said if they're putting the alcohol swab, he'd be like, ooh, that tickles. I was thinking more that, that it would fall off and he, he would have a delayed reaction and go like, oh, oh, and then like try to jam it back in. This happens every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the thing too was he, he didn't even, I mean, I guess it'd be one thing if you actually had a prosthetic, right? And you, know, you lost your arm, you go in there and you just try to you know, get her to stab the prosthetic or him, the nurse, or either one. Um, <laughs> bends, and bends uh, the needles. But he, this guy actually like got bought a prosthetic and attached her. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's a whole different, different ball game there. I mean, at that point, you're definitely trying to defraud somebody. Yeah. Well, what would um, carry the, 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 deeper charge would it be the identity fake identity or whatever or would it be the the fraud charge which one do you think would carry a higher fine or a higher sentence i mean is this jail time if you tried this i mean of course it doesn't really apply to the u.s because technically you can't force anybody to get the vaccine per se right now anyhow over there in italy they they have to get it if they want to just live life period so i again i have sympathy for this man even though I don't have sympathy for this man. I get it, but which one would uh, which which one would he face like more jail time with? I mean, it's really apples and oranges there. I mean, it just what about New York State? In New York, I uh, I mean, if there was like an actual 
fraud charge, I think that would probably be worse than uh, just a COVID sort of violation charge, like trying to obtain or trying to sell a fake COVID card. Mm. Um, but, you know, I think it, it, it would be worse if it was more of like a scheme. You know what I mean? Like you had done this multiple times. So I think that would make it worse. But this was one time just for himself. Well, speaking of schemes and uh, completely the opposite of this story, here's somebody who was just lining up to get the jabs. Another guy <laughs> over in New Zealand reportedly paid, uh, was paid to get up to 10 COVID vaccines in one day. Uh, basically, guy down on his luck. He's basically lining up on the street like, hey, I'm a, I'm a pin cushion for hire. So people that did not want to get their uh, COVID vaccine paid this guy some money. He went, stood in line, basically fake the identity, said, yeah, I'm so-and-so, and got jabbed 10 times. So does this have a more severe penalty in your mind than the other guy? Or would this be a case where they'd say this man is obviously down on his luck, uh, probably a little mentally unstable, and maybe he gets a more of a pass? Or is this a worse crime in your opinion? I think it's worse because it's not just the to one time to benefit yourself. You're, you're doing this multiple times and now there's 10 people out there walking around with uh you know a covid vaccination card potentially even though they're not vaccinated right yeah as opposed to just yourself doing it that's correct but you're right that guy probably is down on his luck something like that or maybe he's just really cautious i don't know you know maybe he wanted to get vaxxed 10 times (laughs) but yeah i think that would probably mitigate the sentence somewhat yeah you know, just the personal circumstances. We, we equated this to a 2021 version of bum fights. You know, it's like, hey, we're not going to get these bums to fight each other. We're just going to pay you to get a COVID vaccine times 10 mm-hmm. in a single day. Mm-hmm. God, that's a lot. That's like sun up to sun down. You know, that's like 9 a.m. to 10 p. Yeah, I mean, you got to wait 15 minutes after each one in the little observation area. So, you know, I mean, uh, yeah. that's, that's a lot of time. Do you think he... Okay, so I... Assuming he didn't, I, I assume he went maybe unless he has some sort of mode of transportation. I'm assuming he's someone he doesn't have that. You know, he walks or has a bike. May have gone to the same place twice. Maybe he got word from the guy in Italy and then you wore disguises, you know, a fake nose, <laughs> glasses with the mustache, something yeah. to, you know, shake things up, a wig, a <laughs> little wholesale prosthetic <laughs> scheme going on too. Yeah. Well, here's the other question that I have. Um, So since this guy obviously violated several rules, laws, and regulations, especially when it comes to COVID and identity theft and all the like, um, can the state or the federal government, can they claim you as a body of science, so to speak? So now this guy's got 10 shots in one day. Everybody's concerned whether the vaccine's safe, 100%, yes, no, what are the side effects? Could they say, fine, we're not going to send you to jail, we're not going to fine you, but we are going to test the shit out of you. You are now a government Petri dish, and we want to see what these mRNA vaccines are fully capable of since you have elected to make yourself a walking guinea pig. Yeah, it's like a Frank Frank Abagnale from Catch Me If You Can. You know know all the ins and outs of uh, check fraud, but we're not going to have you do Mm – you stole all this money, but we're not going to have you do time. You're going to sit here with the FBI and explain to us how to catch other frauditors. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I've seen enough superhero and alien movies to know that anytime there's a superhero or an alien, the government always wants to get their hand on these guys and study them or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's what happens. Okay. So your, so your legal opinion is based on Marvel films. <laughs> well, yeah, not just Marvel, all superhero movies. All, all, what about E.T., you know? It's true. Predator. Okay, okay ex- exp- exp- wait, don't just say Predator because it's another <laughs> alien movie. <laughs> <laughs> E.T., is it because the government comes in to test E.T.? Is that why you're getting that? Yeah. Yeah. That's the exact point that you asked him, I'm pretty sure. God, yeah. Alien. Yeah, but- Thank you, Alan. Thank you. you yeah, know, I you got you back. Up, you I just speak up more often, man. <laughs> well, no, I, I like to. I like to take in the legal, the legalese that I hear from you. Uh, but the uh, differ- the difference I, between I, I, I like this. Mur, 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 he always, you know, he's always contradicting me. I need somebody on my side. On, uh, oh, on I got stuff. no problem contradicting Mur. Let's do it. <laughs> That's roll, very true. Roll up my Mur, shirt, shirt blue. Let me put on. Let me put on my fake boxing arms. <laughs> 
The difference between E.T. and what this guy in New Zealand did is E.T. came down in a spacecraft from a fucking foreign fucking rock in the middle of a goddamn galaxy, and this guy is an earthly earthly being. Okay, what about the what about the X Men? You know, they want to get the Sentinels and you know mutant registration and all that sort of stuff. Huh? Okay, that's much closer to what's actually happening with the pandemic. <laughs> I think we're still pretty far off of place. <laughs> and yet, somehow, E.T. seems more realistic. Okay. Well, so... Um, Harry, so Harry, Harry and the Hendersons. They, they, yes, the government wanted their paws on that's, Harry. That's definitely real. Okay. We know that. That's Alf, you always had to hide Alf, right? Yeah. yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Let's move on <laughs> as quickly as... Door. <laughs> I did not at all open any doors in any way, shape, or form. Um, okay, and I guess we're pretty much all COVID-related. We've got one final one coming up that is not COVID-related. It's completely holiday-related. Uh, but because of the pandemic, there's a lot of lockdowns happening. Other countries have it worse than we do here in the U.S. And in Germany, uh, they're still on lockdown. And there was a man who was making his way from his bed to his home office... And he slipped and fell and injured himself. And then he he, uh, basically sued his employer's insurance, claiming that this was a workplace injury, that he was injured during his commute. So that 20 steps he was taking from his bed to his computer, falls, uh, hurts himself, files the claim. Court has decided that uh, he is absolutely correct, that this was part of his commute. And since he was hurt during that, the insurance uh, must pay his claim. Uh, right call, wrong call. Can you? Uh, can you? Is this a is this a legal loophole because of the pandemic, or is this just something that we could all get away with? Should we be working from home? Well, I, I think the problem is uh, in the U.S. So they don't cover workers' comp doesn't cover you in the U.S. if you get hurt during your commute. At least here in New York, and I think most states. So the workers' comp law in Germany must be much more friendly because normally you wouldn't get. You wouldn't get covered during your commute at all. So it wouldn't even be an issue here. But I think that's really, really stretching it commute wise <laughs> in <laughs> Germany. <laughs> you know, like, damn. Uh, you know, they're making, he, they're making like, up. I, stuff. I mean, <laughs> at what point at what point is it not his commute? I mean, so he went from what, his upstairs uh bedroom down to his downstairs office. You know, what if he stops off and uses the bathroom on the way? You you, ah. you pose you pose <laughs> a very good question. Commute? You pose a very good question, Alan Emerge, if you want to enlighten uh, Adam on on some of the details. Well, um, he did not stop for his morning breakfast just yet, and the court ruled that had he gone to breakfast and then made his way to his computer, the claim would not be covered because he would have taken a personal break for a meal. So because hmm. he went directly from his bed to his uh, workstation, uh, it was in fact covered. I don't know how they sniffed out any of that bullshit because <laughs> you know that some bitch sat down with some uh, hollandaise sauce and some eggs before he got to his computer and just yeah. didn't tell anybody about it. Yeah, there's no <laughs> way I'm doing work before I eat when I'm working from home. I mean, the the kitchen is right there. I'm not sitting down and doing work before I have breakfast. Yeah, coffee, water. Yeah, yeah. A dump, you know. I don't, maybe maybe you guys, not you guys, <laughs> me definitely, hundred <laughs> percent. Well, I mean, I'm thinking about like the whole. Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking about the bathroom break thing, but technically that would still be a work function. Like work can't tell you like you can't take a shit. So I, I'd say that's still a work function. Um, but do you think that they're being a little more lenient because because it's the lockdown? Like, what are you going to do? Like, you know what I mean? I don't I don't I don't know. I mean, maybe the court's showing some leniency here because I mean, the guys, the guy. Anyway, how can he? OK, it's not like the guy's not going to be able to make it to work, <laughs> even if, you know. He's not going to miss work because yeah, he got hurt at home. Short-term disability. Here we go. <laughs> Can't work. Yeah. Depends on how bad but he, hurt he got hurt. But, but what, if he, what if he got hurt so bad? I mean, even if he's sitting at a computer all day, what if he's you know, now paralyzed or something yeah. like that and he can type? That's a whole different ball of wax, man. I mean, if you're... Then who's, but, but he can't sue anybody. He's got to get... He gets... So he gets... Uh, he, can't sue him, he can't sue himself, you know, because it's it's his house, he can't collect workers' comp. Can't work. Right? Oh, shit. Sorry, I barely read the story. He slipped and fractured a vertebra. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That changes the whole fucking tone of this 
<laughs> yeah, this wasn't a, well, a sprained wrist or a uh, uh, you know a, a bruised knee. Yeah, I thought he like fucking like you know blew out a hammy or something. Like I thought it was just something minor. Wow, what a what a klutz! Jesus, yeah, yeah right. That. Did he fall down some stairs? <laughs> I feel like yes, he, he did. He fell. He fell down the stairs and he broke his fucking back. Yeah. That's the only way you do that in your own home is falling down some stairs. <laughs> Working from home on your computer. I mean, Hans, listen. Do your eyeballs and fingers work? I'll see you. T- I'll see you on Monday. Alan, yeah, you, or yeah. Adam, you started out. Uh, you started out doing um, claims where, where people would just sue uh, a bunch of people for for claims like this, and then you would go out and try to figure out, you know, how to narrow it down, how to get, how to really pinpoint who they should sue. Is there any suspicion that maybe he was like hardwood steps? All right, I'm putting on the slippery socks. Daddy's getting hurt. Oh. I don't want to work tomorrow. I, I was actually just thinking, <laughs> thinking that in my head. I was, you know, the guy's like, it's like the shining in there, right? I mean, the guy's like, you know, 15 months of lockdown. I can't take it. It's a stupid job. I just at this computer all day. And, you know, it's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. He finally works up the courage. You know, um, I, and I do do that sort of thing in other cases. Sometimes I try to think about what might have really happened. But, you know, the thing is, uh, it's only I mean, when you go to court, you, you can only show what you can prove. You can't just sit there and say, well, I think this person could have done this. Sure, they could have. But you can't even say something like that. Right. If in, in court, you can't say, I think this guy faked it unless there's some sort of evidence that you know he was he might have faked it or unless you get like a like a tom cruise like lawyer who says like i think he wants to tell us he faked it yeah he wants to exactly to me exactly well i don't (laughs) want to risk a court martial so (laughs) (laughs) so i don't don't push my luck like that (laughs) i i don't know a lot of fellas who like to go uh (laughs) heal the chin and fucking break their back point that's a good point for half their year for half their year salary <laughs> when they could just walk downstairs and make the full year's salary <laughs> he's i mean at worst he was trying to like roast an ankle or something and he fucked it up big time and now he's now he's got serious permanent back trouble you know mm, and yeah. hand and leg and yeah everything. <laughs> everything i think we i think we all can agree this guy is not an honest fella he was he was fucking around it's not, Absolutely, it's not, not a hard worker. 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and finally, uh, we've got the holidays coming up, and of course, your TV sets are going to be inundated with all sorts of holiday flicks and films. And especially me now, I'm trying to introduce my son to a lot of our Christmas classics, and of course, one of those classics is Home Alone. Now, of course, when we were kids, it was a different world, different era, different time, and. There's a lot of criminal activity that happens in Home Alone, and not just by uh, what are their names, Harry and Marv. That's right, Harry and Marv. Yes, yeah, Harry, the, the Harry and Marv. Bandits. The Wet Bandits are the obvious criminals in Home Alone. But what about Kevin McFucking Callister? What about that deviant son of a bitch? So let's go over some of the crimes and uh, crimes against humanity, really, that occur in Home Alone. Um. Adam, when was the last time you watched Home Alone? Uh, about three hours ago. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I like a man who does himself some research. It so, just happened to be on, and, and I knew we were doing that. I was like, well, I can't not. I can't not it some, it <laughs> Sometimes we, we barely read the fucking articles that we're about to uh, discuss. I, I don't watch an entire movie as a one time. whole movie. <laughs> Actually, I, I, only caught, I only caught the last 45 minutes and then maybe the first 20 minutes of Home Alone, too. The last 45 of Home Alone is all you need because the rest of it is just set up to what's getting ready to happen. So um, let's start with the obvious, the crimes committed by Harry and Marv. Now, I have a whole article that kind of breaks them down, but I'd just like to hear your your genuine, general uh, breakdown of what Harry and Marv are all about. All right. So, I mean, obviously there's birth three, right? Uh, there's assault and battery on Kevin. Um, is there assault on a minor? Is that different than regular? Is that does that through a carry a uh, uh, wheel? Yeah. Vehicle? Okay. Usually a harsher penalty. Uh, see, vandalism, right? Um, what else did those guys do? Uh, like, well, you could probably charge them with conspiracy or threatening or menacing. It depends on the state how they define the things, but you know, their harassment of Kevin too. It's not Ooh. just like they tried to rob his house. They were 
actively out to get this guy. Didn't this Ma- kid. didn't uh, uh I'm forgetting what Joe Pe- <clears throat> is Joe Pesci Harry or Marv? Harry. Harry, didn't uh didn't he come to the house uh wearing a cop suit impersonating yeah, an officer? So, yeah. Yeah. Yep, impersonating a police officer. See, I that was that was before the uh, last 45 minutes. Uh, oh, that's yeah. all that that was the setup. That's why we're here. Yeah. Fill you in. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm also reading in this article, aggravated trespassing. What's the difference between trespassing and aggravated trespassing? Well, I don't know. I think that's, that's probably a state to state sort of thing. My guess would be that aggravated trespassing would be you know, trespassing in, in it with an intent to sort of threaten somebody or harass somebody or something like that. Mm. Yeah. Cause I was thinking like, if I, okay, like if somebody's just in my yard, they're trespassing, but if they're in my shed, they're, they're, they're aggressively trespassing because i had to break in uh, or, or if they're out there with signs that say you know there's you know mer sucks or something like that and they've got you know waving torches in your front yard or something like you know they're not just standing there but is it a crime if it's true <laughs> mm. <laughs> guess you couldn't sue them for slander or libel <laughs> okay uh one of the other uh kind of like sections in this article is like kevin's parents and child neglect uh, would they face any charges? Can you make a mistake? Can you pull an oopsie and not get charged? Or um, do you always get charged if something negative happens to the child and you were quote unquote negligent? Uh, I think it depends on the intent. You know, I mean, here they made an honest mistake um, and tried to try to correct it. And yeah, I, I don't think they would get charged in this situation. Now, Maybe after the second one, you know, I, you know, after the second movie, <laughs> maybe a different story, right? You know, prosecutor's like, wait, so you did this last Christmas, and he met the same robbers in a different city, you know? <laughs> right? I mean, it sounds like, it sounds like maybe Harry and Marv are in on it with the parents. You know, the parents are like, get rid of this kid. We got way too many kids in this house. You know, we got like 12 fucking kids in here. We can't keep them all straight. Kevin's the worst. You know, <laughs> get rid of them. Or they <laughs> like <laughs> legit keep forgetting them and the parents are trying to get insurance scam. You know what I mean? Like Harry and Marv are supposed to steal some like family heirlooms and they mm-hmm. just never get the chance to because fucking Kevin's whooping their ass. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe, um, or maybe the parents took out a big life insurance policy on Kevin. <laughs> you know, right, people. Oh, I forget. I forget. How do they end up losing Kevin in New York in the second one? Were, well, were they with so Kevin going, in New York? Well, Kevin ends up in New York, so they're supposed to go to Florida for vacation, and they're in the they're at the airport, and Kevin gets separated from them, and he's following somebody who looks like his dad from the back, and gets on the wrong plane. And ends up, he ends up in New York, but he's got his dad's bag, which has the wallet, the money, the credit cards, and stuff. That's how he's able to right because live you know j- checking into a flight like that, uh, you know, Florida and you know M- Miami and New York airplanes, you know, they're just going to let you on the plane. Like, oh, you got a ticket? Doesn't matter where it says. Go ahead. It's one size fits all. Hop on. Well, <laughs> you have to remember this is pre nine eleven, where it yeah, was man. possible. I think you like, can smoke on airplanes and shit. Go back and watch um, Die Hard 2 because it all takes place in an airport. And just keep yourself a nice legal pad. Adam, I know you have one of those. And just start writing down all the things that are being done in an airport that can no longer be done in an airport. Oh. Yes. Yeah, like hijacking planes, you know? I love to ruin that. <laughs> Smoking. <laughs> Killed it. The, Everyone has a gun. They're all smoking cigarettes. Uh, there is no TSA. There's no TSA. Uh, they're just moving randomly through the airport like it's a fucking mall. People Christmas. Like, people with like ten ounce bottles of things, you know, liquids, you know, <laughs> over over the limit now. <laughs> well, finally, let's get to the uh, the big one here, Kevin, Kevin McAllister, that little son of a bitch. Was he like ten years old in this movie? Um, can he be charged with several crimes, even though Harry and were the ones trying to break into his house? Finally struck me when I started thinking about this is that he's old enough to call the cops. In fact, in the last 10 minutes of the movie, he does call the cops. Mm-hmm. But at no point during this entire escapade does Kevin call the police to let them know that two guys are menacing and trying to break into his house. 
He waits until they get to the neighbor's house. He even sets it up. He booby traps the shit out of everything, which I think's illegal. But could Kevin be charged as a minor for the crimes that he commits against Harry and Marv? Mm, here's the problem. I think we may have talked about like booby traps before on the show. Yes, we have. And uh, yeah, so you can't set a booby trap in your house, but if you know if you know that somebody is breaking in right if somebody is breaking in then you could certainly leave a you know make a makeshift booby trap or something like that you, you know to stop them um as long as they were going to use deadly force you could use deadly force against them here you know marvin harry marvin harry are threatening to kill him uh they would kill him if they actually had the chance it seems so uh the force is reasonable and it's to a known threat as opposed to just, oh, I'm just going to leave booby traps out for any old person you might stumble in. What? He leaves like 15 booby traps. Yeah, right. Traps. You, could, you, could, you could ice the basement steps, and then that person then could come in. You could tar the steps leading up to the first floor, and that person would lose their shoes and step on a nail. Then he would decide mm-hmm. to go in through another window, and you could put Christmas ornaments out. He would step mm-hmm. on them barefooted, <laughs> and then you could walk into oh. uh, a saran wrap and then get feathers fucking tart all over you uh, yeah no, man. i got a question i got a question so um <laughs> you said like if somebody's breaking in i could i could set up a booby trap but i can't just have a booby trap all the time so like it, hypothetically like i couldn't just leave a bunch of fucking hot wheels next to a door like all the time but if i heard a uh you know a stranger rustling at my basement door i could mm-hmm. just throw a bunch of hot wheels down real quick and then run away like yeah, that's yeah. that's fine. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. But how do we? How would one confirm that if you were like investigating that? Like, how how do you know that I didn't have my Hot Wheels there for <laughs> two years? How did how do you know that I didn't suspend paint cans from the top of my stairwell <laughs> just in case? <laughs> you know what I mean? It just seems it, I don't. That seems like a strange, very specific portion yeah. to the to the law. I think Alan brings up a fantastic point because um, you don't just magically paint cans strung to a fucking banister like mm. within like 30 seconds like, hey i think somebody's breaking in hey hey genie can you grab the paint cans and some <laughs> rope let's measure that out no maybe, it's 23 and a half feet maybe <laughs> maybe the dude was in the navy and he knows knots really well he's can, can whip those puppies up quickly <laughs> fucking mechanical engineer he's just yes. whipped that up and fucking yeah. he's like yep yeah, got it <laughs> a 10 year old sailor just happens to live in the middle of chicago <laughs> It's the outskirts, buddy. John Hughes movies always go on the outskirts. <laughs> don't get it, get it, don't get it twisted. I, 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 actually, are we are, are we through with uh, Home Alone? I ha- I do want to throw you a curveball. I was thinking about this today, another Christmas right. movie. But are, are we are we through with Home Alone? Kevin's okay. Kevin, it's all uh, it's all self defense, and he gets by because he's ten. And if he's like fucking seventeen, he probably wouldn't get by. Right. I think you add up Marv and Harry's sentence and they get some time taken off for the shit that got kicked out of them based on Kevin's behavior. And Kevin has to go to community service and something like that. That's, that's they, my sentence. Could they uh, take Kevin to civil court uh, for, for pain and suffering? Even though mm. they were in the act of committing a crime? Maybe? Yeah, he has to have a big old fucking uh, uh, M on mm-hmm. his palm yeah. forever. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure fucking Marv's uh, the arches of Marv's feet were just sliced to fucking like I think he's got flat feet now. He probably has long term long term issues. He's got to wear orthopedic shoes. Very expensive. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I'm just curious. Definitely tetanus. Yeah, at least I mean, that sort of stuff does happen. I mean, there, there's a sort of infamous story of where a, a, a robber fell through a skylight and landed on somebody's. Uh, life on their kitchen table and uh sued the homeowner right i mean it happens you could you could sue anybody i could sue you you could sue all you guys right now if i wanted to <laughs> you know you could Fair. sue anybody anytime really the question is whether or not you're actually going to get any money for it and i don't know any jury that's going to give money to a robber well, well that's a good Fair. point it's a good point Mer, are we good we good I- i'm anxious we're good i'm anxious okay so Christmas, uh, Christmas story. All right, they're preparing the the meal that they're all going to eat. Then the Bumpus's dogs, the, the hounds, mm. come storming in. 
They uh, they don't cause serious damage, but I, if you remember, a uh, table gets broken, the door gets smashed. Uh, you know, I, I'm lamp, assuming right? that there's, there's a few other. What's that? Does that lamp get smashed? The one that he really likes, the the leg lamp. No, that that, that the guy, mom. The mom did it, but they don't they don't show it. Yeah, she did that uh, spike. Okay. But there were some family things broken, uh, and then of course the meal gets eaten. I don't know if that could be lumped in with the damages, but. With the, the bumpuses. <laughs> the bumpuses. Now, could the bumpuses be liable for what what just happened? Could their hounds pull it, pulling like a a running of the bulls through the uh, through the. I can't even remember the what was that family name. I don't even know. I don't know. Hmm. That's a good question. Ralphie and <laughs> damn it! Wow. All right, whatever. Well, either way. Yeah, I think you could. I mean. I guess the only way you wouldn't be able to, well, here's the thing. So with like dog bites, for instance, I don't know about dog running through uh, Christmas dinner. <laughs> dog cases, stampede. Those, but uh, I've seen some dog bite cases. Uh, with dog bites, at least you have to show that the dog has a propensity for doing for biting. You know, it's acted aggressively before. So basically, the dog gets one like one free bite is 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 the way the law is called. No. Yeah. So your dog can bite one person one time, and that's it. And that person can't sue you, at least in New York, or can't recover, at least in New York, because the dog hasn't been shown to be violent before. So how would you know that your dog was going to bite somebody, right? Oh, my dog was always so sweet. I don't know what it is. You know, it's one time. But then once the dog starts doing it again, then you can be liable. So, you know, if this dog had crashed other things before other parties, cause other damage, you know, rumpus through places, then yeah, yeah, definitely. Damn, I feel just, like this dog probably has a history. Well, those are yeah, dogs. Those are probably like a dozen of them. It's like so a, it's like like a pack, pack, right? So you're yeah. saying yeah. that, that if, if there was, if this hadn't been done before, that perhaps that this could be their get out of jail free card. Well, our dogs are always, you know, just howl and bark in the backyard. How the hell yeah, was I, I supposed mean, to know they were going to smash two doors and eat an entire turkey and break yeah, a bunch of exactly. frame and trim exactly. along the way? Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I think so. uh, if this was just like a dog bite, then, yeah, you, you, it would be. But wouldn't they be at least, like, liable for the damages? Like, they, like maybe replace the table, replace the door frame, maybe replace the turkey? Yeah, I uh, possibly. What if the Bumpus is say those, those weren't our dogs mm, not ours mm -mm. those were other those were another dozen hounds from down the street <laughs> yeah that that that's true i guess you could get witnesses to come in and say that they've seen the dogs at the bumpuses and <laughs> you know the whole thing be like to kill a mockingbird you know but <laughs> oh man and there's no dna testing back in the 1950s so even if you retrieve some hair spit saliva whatever it, it wouldn't it wouldn't matter. They would say DNA. <laughs> what is, what is what it? What these letters? What are you testing the dog's <laughs> DNA? It was in 1950, but they just couldn't do advanced stuff with. I think the problem is existed. the old man didn't set up booby traps. He should have had some bear traps set up around and some Hot Wheels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Get the uh, get the old Red Rider BB gun like on a little string. That's you know? yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Ralph Lee's upstairs. Fucking. Was this after he, uh, he the, the the icicle went? Because the mom went upstairs to help out with his recovery. Is that why spoiler the old man alert. was left? Spoiler alert! No, I think this is while he was uh, checking his his Ovaltine uh, wristband or ring to see what the no code no, no this is Christmas morning. This is why they went out to the the Chinese restaurant. Oh. Mm, yes, yeah. that's the very end of the that's movie. Then. Yeah, that's true. But but think about this: if the bumps of dogs hadn't burst through, then they wouldn't have that lifelong memory of uh, having a bunch of Chinamen singing "Fa ra 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 ra." <laughs> a movie script, or at least a part of a movie script, you could not write today. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Surprised they they haven't cut that part uh, yet from the from the television version, right? Yeah, yeah like, I would say I'm. I'm there's like there's I'm like eight always sunny episodes I can't watch anymore. <laughs> no, no. I, I keep, every year I keep thinking it's going to be dubbed over. Well, they did the, They're doing the musical right now, or last year they were anyway. And yes, they changed it. They changed it back to Fa La 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 La. They didn't 
They didn't do the fa ra 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 ra, which is bullshit, by the way, because it steals. I know I said this last year. It steals from the essence of what those Chinese folk were trying to pull off for these guys. Because you got to remember, this is 1950s America, mm-hmm. where the Chinese were looked at uh, a little less favorably than they are in this era. And these people, these Chinese folks who are celebrating Christmas now with this family who had their turkey destroyed, were trying to bring some holiday spirit, yet they're... Their, their, their dialect did not allow them to pronounce the words properly, but they pushed through. They pushed through, and they tried to sing an American Christmas classic to this family. And though they struggled, it's okay. It's not any kind of cultural appropriation or any kind of, like, uh, racial nonsense. It's just some people with a bad uh, lisp. Yeah. Mm. And, and let's go ahead, Alan. I'm pretty sure some white guy wrote that, so I'm going to go ahead and say it's racist. Uh, sure, but if I learn a second language, my ability, like if I learn, if I learn Spanish, okay, I'm not going to be able to roll my R's like the Spaniards are, right? I mean, you could. It's not that hard. It well for a tongue that's never done it before, I'm going to be um, ill-equipped to pull it off the first time, and so like they could mock me for it, or they could appreciate the fact. That I'm trying to speak in their native tongue. I I I bet you what happened was when they were shooting that movie, the the people in the Chinese restaurant, you know, they they come out, they, they do the first take, and they do la 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 la, you know, perfectly. And the director's like, no 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 no, that won't do it. Do it like this, and he do just it, does it real. Do it like a fun. do it like a Chinaman is <laughs> yeah, what he said. Yeah, I bet exactly. on the fucking set. That's I'm probably true. why. I think uh, they probably probably tell you. Japanese. No, 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 he said, "You people don't pronounce L's. You, pr- you say them as R's, <laughs> and <laughs> they then do. they hit it again." I'm telling you, in my line of work, I run Listen. into for whatever reason in Elkton, Maryland, a lot of Asian folks. They cannot. They can't do it. Listen, they can't man. do it. I, I think we've had we've heard me tell this story before. I worked at a Korean, or, or it's not a Korean deli, but it's run by Koreans. It's just a regular deli. Uh, when I was finishing up undergrad and we did catering orders and in those catering orders were pigs in a blanket handwritten on the invoice was pig blanket, pig blanket. <laughs> and like me and my buddy got a good chuckle out of it because they literally wrote it the way they say it. And like, so I look, I get it. It's true. <laughs> Let's also not take away from the fact that after all the caroling was done, they did get, a full-blown roasted duck. And that shit looked mm-hmm. for... You know, I mean, it was cooked to perfection, sure. man. And Ralph even said it. He said, I'm, I'm, I'll never forget this. It was a great Christmas. Yeah. 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 Damn right. <laughs> There's goddamn bumpuses. The old man was up fixing trim and, and mesh, door mesh, all night. <laughs> <laughs> Sipping whiskey. I don't even know if he drank. Oh, God, whatever. Yeah, well, they definitely drank. He, uh, but yeah, I don't think you saw it so much on the episode. He, him and the... Um, him and his wife were enjoying some wine late night. That was that was the only time you saw him drink. Oh, they were drinking wine during Christmas Day, like morning. while they were unwrapping presents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After they were enjoying some morning wine. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, some, some family fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you have to listen to your youngest talk about a Zeppelin. Who fuck cares? Fuck your Zeppelin. Punk. Yeah, I was gonna say, you think alcohol was the the social fucking topic that they decided to? You know, die on the hill on the the hill to die on. Like no, they were fucking drinking. They they had Asian people saying fa ra ra ra. Like it's perfectly fine. It was of the time, you know. Understood. Understood. Good to go. Well, Adam, uh, appreciate it. Hey, man. uh, Shit, we're gonna have to get we're we're gonna have to be a little more proactive because I feel like we do stories and then we're like, hey, we should have Adam on to talk about those. We gotta be we gotta be a little more selective in Mm -hmm. how we hold these. But thank you very much. Uh, Christmas. I don't know what. If anyone is uh debating getting into some Christi, Chris, Christian Christmas mischief, what would be your legal advice? Don't get caught. Don't <laughs> don't not do it. Just don't get caught. Don't there you go. You heard it first here. Lawyer, right here. Uh, asking for a friend, Adam. Appreciate it, man. All right. Thanks, guys. Like a warm, creamy chutney.
Get ready for another spoonful of the middle class holes. Thank you, Adam, for that, uh, asking for a friend. And, of course, if any of you have any legal questions or want to know something, if, you, if your ass is in a bind or in a pinch or your friend is in a bind in a pinch, hit us up. Uh, mm. We'll be happy to pass that along to our legal counsel. Uh, before we get to Fun Fact Friday, we have more words of wisdom from Colonel Sanders. Around the time I was 14 years old, my mama told me I needed to expand my worldview by starting a pen pal with a girl named Felipa Boa out of Guadalajara, Mexico. Of course, we lost touch, but years later, I made my way south of the border only to find that time had been as sweet to her as honey is to a bee. Ooh, after that night of passion, I looked down upon her and came up with the idea for my sweet, thick, salty southern gravy. Mm. <laughs> Colonel uh, Colonel Sanders Kentucky Fried Chicken Alright Murr Christmas edition Fun Fact Friday Let's have it Let's get to it my friends It is time for five fun facts for you fuckers On a Friday Being brought to you of course by the Shin Splints Recovery Group you got a pain Below your knee and above your ankle And you'd like some Grifter assholes to tell you more about it <laughs> Head on over to Facebook and find the Shin Splints Recovery Group. Let's get to it. Five fun facts for you fuckers on a Friday. Did you know candy canes used to be straight white sticks? Red stripes were added in the early 1900s, and now about 1.76 billion are sold annually during the holiday season alone. Knew none of that. Yeah, why, why did they say they curved it? Um, well, it's, there's multiple reasonings for it. Uh, some say it's a shepherd's cane. <clears throat> okay. Um, I, I think mainly it's because people who made candy sticks were like, uh, if we make a little hook on there, we can hang them on trees and we'll sell shit ton more of them. <laughs> so, and then we'll tell I'm them there's a shortage sure. of peppermint. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm pretty sure they just made up the shepherd's cane, and uh, that way you could hang them on your tree, and that's what we used to do as kids, and yeah. then we got to eat them. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably right. It's either that or the polar opposite. is like a group of fucking evangelicals were like, well, candy canes. Like, they need to look like shepherd's canes. Uh, and then, you know, now we're here. That, uh, <clears throat> I do wonder, that, have you ever guys ever had uh, like a, uh, coffee through a candy cane straw? Mm-hmm. No, I mean, oh yeah, no. that's yummy. That's, I don't, I don't no. drink coffee. So. That's yummy. You don't do what? All you do, I don't drink coffee. Oh shit! Uh, Damn, hot chocolate. It's the same effect. I, I mean, I get it because like I, I do uh, like a very classic Baltimore lemon stick. You know, with the peppermint stick and the fucking lemon half. Oh know? yeah. So yeah, I mean, I get it. I get the premise. I, I, I guess it's how they roll it. But uh, yeah, if you put it well, coffee hot liquids work better because. You put it in there and it starts to dissolve. Yeah. And then here's what I do: I flip it upside down, and then you, for some reason, you get this ridge, this spiral ridge up the outside, and you can just suck on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Meet All yourself right. a yeah. woman from Guadalajara, Peppermintville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you catch your name, by the way? No. No. What was it? <laughs> Felipe Bella. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy ass name. Yeah. Did you know every planet in the solar system can fit between the Earth and the moon, but this can't. Even one third of the sun would be too big to fit. But is that not bonkers? Like we think of the we think of how big these massive these planets are, but even like Jupiter. Yeah. But like every planet in the solar system can fit between us and the moon. That's how distant shit is. I, I would ha if you had presented me that question just as a yes or no. I would have been somewhat, uh, well, a bet rather, money bet. I would I would have been somewhat skeptic because I would have looked at it from a Joe Bloggs thing. Like, oh, well, the obvious answer is no. And you're presenting it to me in a way like, do you think all the planets could fit between the Earth and the moon? God damn, now i got to think about this. But upon initial thought, I mean, Jupiter and Saturn together are fucking massive. Huge. Yeah. And now, now add what? Uh, <clears throat> Mars, Venus. 
Well, he's Pluto. I don't know if you're if you're adding Pluto and Neptune. No, even if you did, Pluto is actually smaller than our moon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, it's not even considered a, a planet anymore. Jupiter can fit thirteen hundred Earths. Yeah. Huh. You guys remember That's when? Silly. You guys remember when uh, uh, comets, uh, asteroids hit it probably like twenty years ago? I don't think it was that quite that long ago, but yeah, no, yeah, it was. It was like ninety nine. Right. It was like nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, but I do remember seeing the uh, like those scientists like cream in their fucking pants yeah. watching that shit. It was pretty legit though. <laughs> and they were just like blasting through this gas, yeah. space like a turd through your rear end, just going through the gas, <laughs> space. <laughs> like how Alan sums it up, <laughs> space. But I didn't know it, and I I would not have bet that that was the case. That just seems odd to me. Can you add Earth? Can you, do you say all of Everything not well not bet- named Earth? between yeah so it can't be the Earth but I mean I don't know how much would the Earth be considering... the considering <laughs> would the Earth be the kicker like, you put it yeah, Earth in know. there Wait, what was it again all the other planets yeah all the planets put together would fit between the Earth and the Moon yeah I mean Christ Saturn uh, Saturn Jupiter and Neptune are <laughs> that's that's ridiculous so okay yeah oh uh, was it uh. Mallory, Valerie, Emily, Mickles, just really That's saved up. That's weird. Wait, wait, just saved up nine hundred ninety nine nickels. Uh, there you these, go. Uh, Mercury, these... Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Are these women you made out with in middle school or something? No, this is what's in the Cat in the Hat book that I've been reading my kid about the universe. Ah, uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you know? The original versions of Microsoft Solitaire and Minesweeper were not created to entertain you. Their purpose was to trick you into learning mouse fluency and drag and drop features and to make the idea of left to right clicking second nature without you knowing it. Hmm. Interesting. Mission accomplished. Yeah, that's well done. Mouse efficiency. That's, uh, no, I didn't know that, but that actually is quite fucking genius if you yes, ask, yes, if you ask it me. Is. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know how many times I... You said Solitaire or Minecraft and what? <laughs> no, just Solitaire and Minesweeper. Minesweeper. Mine. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I could... Uh, I was one of the few that could never figure out Minesweeper, so I didn't pay it too much attention. But Solitaire <laughs> spent a lot of time pissing away at that, trying to figure out the perfect game, how we could, you know, solve it in, in the fastest time possible. No, I played a lot of Minesweeper. I finally figured it I figured out the algorithm if you will if there is if you want to call it that but i never got i could really only do the the initial grid like whatever like the default grid was that's the only one i could really do huh. after that it just became a lot of clicking <laughs> hoping you didn't hit a bomb <laughs> a lot of yeah yeah just a lot of clicking i think i saw some bigger puzzles but they were just bullshit random luck but no no but i mean the fact that they were like okay how can we teach these fucking neanderthal dipshits how to fucking use our product i don't know give them a game to play that's brilliant look at that left click down baby come on let's go did you know you eat more sweets when you're sad because your emotional state alters your perception of taste foods that aren't your favorite taste wait sorry let me read that foods that aren't your favorite taste worse when you're upset and therefore less desirable the need for comfort food is really your subconscious wanting uh, what won't. I apologize. I've had one too many white claws. <laughs> <laughs> and this is worded very strangely. The need for comfort food is really your subconscious wanting what. Ah, I got it. <laughs> what it can I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this again. You know what? Fuck this. Leave this in. I'm reading the whole goddamn thing again. You eat more sweets when you're sad because your emotional state alters your perception of taste. Foods that aren't your favorite taste worse when you're upset and therefore are less desirable. The need for comfort food is really your subconscious wanting what won't be ruined by your temporary sorrow. I don't even know what the words I just read, to be quite fucking honest with you. I mean, it was a little bit of an excessive sentence. Thank you. Whoever wrote that. Your editor should have fucking chopped you in the throat, kind of. Uh, but I get it. Uh, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. 
I guess. I don't even know. Isn't there a term for that called? Isn't there like a sorrow eating or hate eating or something like that? Uh, Eating away hmm. your tears? Am I just making shit up now? No. I think this is probably along the the lines of Morg Butler. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) The Morg Butler could lead you to uh, the sweets you could eat while you're Guilt eating? Guilt eating? Is that Yeah, there's that. Like, there's like stress eating, guilt eating, and shit like that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You're on to something. That's not as bad as Morg Butler. <laughs> that, that, that certainly ranks up there with some of the dumbest shit I've ever said on the uh, podcast. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, when you're upset, you do some uh, irrational things and stuff your face with some shit you shouldn't be eating. I get it. Yeah. Let me just say, I don't like how they made your subconscious a thing. That's what was tripping me up in this fucking sentence. I'm going to read this again because I'm mad about this. The need for comfort food is really your subconscious wanting. It's the need for your subconscious wanting. They're they're referring to your subconscious as a tangible physical thing other than yourself. Subconscious has an appetite. I don't know that they're necessarily saying that it's tangible, but they're just saying that your subconscious can drive your behaviors, which is totally true. Yeah, but your subconscious can't want what you don't want. It's your subconscious. Yeah, mm. but sometimes, I mean, as you know, in other aspects, like you fight your subconscious. But yeah. you still For want whatever it. whatever reason. You're fucking just telling your brain, shut the fuck up. This is what I'm doing right now. You ain't in charge me. Yeah, but like, I think when you get through the whole thing, it's like, oh, are you sad and somebody put sushi in front of you? You're like, eh, I don't I'm hungry, but I don't really want that. I want to eat fucking. I want to eat five guys. You know I get it, I mean? and I'm not disagreeing with you, Alan. I'm just saying that your subconscious can't want what you don't want. It's a part of you. That's that's fair, I guess. So fuck okay. that sentence. Yeah. Have you ever seen Ince- you. Inception? Yeah, it's loaded with your subconscious. Loaded Christ. with that. What? Great Christ! It's a it's a fair <laughs> fair comparison. Now I'm happy to welcome next year's fact calendar, the the OMG calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have Bowfinger on there? All right, can't wait. Yes. And finally, did you know reindeer make excellent getaway cars? In Siberia, people often use rain, reindeer to escape from crime scenes. The Russian police are now asking to have their snowmobiles replaced with reindeer. What? How does that? How? I need more detail. Well, do I mean, just wrangle them. Do they have? Are they walking around with like saddled reindeer? Are they jumping on wild reindeer? None of this is out of the realm of possibility because it's Russia. That's very true. And it, it, well, it's 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 actually worse than Russia. It's Siberia, which yeah, is part know, of Russia. Right? Which is crazy. It's, it's like <laughs> Siberia is like the Florida of Russia. Yeah, so, so or, okay, so you don't have ample gas or mechanics to fix snowmobiles. So therefore, they're a constant problem. Reindeer are more reliable. They're like the carrier they, pigeons of the Siberian. Uh, it's like <laughs> when you watch those Alaskan bush people and they're like, there's always that one guy who's got a team of fucking dog, a dog sled team. Because he's mm-hmm. like, well, can't, I, I'm not a mechanic and I can't fix snowmobiles. So got these fucking dogs. We just keep, keep letting them bang and make more dogs. Right. Well, I've got two points to make here. Uh, one, reindeer are native to that region. They've lived there for centuries. They know the terrain. They're used to it. The cold doesn't bother them. Yeah. If a snowmobile breaks down, well, I got news for you. You can't eat a snowmobile. Oh, yeah. So, I, I mean, you could, what, what is it? What is that thing? What are they? What is uh, Han Solo shove Luke into? In uh, Empire, was it wasn't a reindeer? I'll tell you that. (laughs) (laughs) The tauntaun, the thing that got tauntaun. Tauntaun, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, to me, I'm looking at the reindeer much like a tauntaun. If you broke down, you climb inside of it for about 12 hours till the sun comes up. Then you cut her up. You start a fire. You eat. You eat your reindeer. You know, maybe somebody will finally come looking for you. Maybe another reindeer comes along, and reindeer um are crazy as shit because they like psychedelic mushrooms and uh they will seek them out and they will eat them and uh, i'm pretty sure they're game for whatever the fuck you're game for yeah you don't know how big reindeer are but like you ever seen a moose run through fucking like six feet of snow like it's nothing uh so yeah i mean i totally i I just was curious about the like maybe my question is more geared towards the reindeer husbandry 
uh, mm. aspect of this. <laughs> like, how does one get? How do you get a hold of it? Is is do you, do you have to carry around a lasso for wild reindeer? Uh, how do you mount it? Like, just you know, uh, more procedural questions is really where where well, my confusion is. <laughs> how do you mount it? I can answer that in the back. <laughs> well, yes, yeah. I think in a mur look, this is another. Um... Uh, they'll never make it moment. Tortoise in the hair, reindeer in the snowmobile. Hmm. Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. How, big, how big are a reindeer? <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say reindeer are like the size of a pony. All right, like so, no. two hundred. I'm gonna say a reindeer is like two hundred and sixty pounds. I'm think I, I'm gonna say the males can get up to four hundred. Well, I mean, if we've learned anything that in nature is that males are usually smaller. Uh, but, yeah, it could be reversed in this one. So females usually measure some fucking amount of centimeters. Uh, 68, 64 to 81 inches in length and weigh 80 to 120 kilograms. It's 180 to 260 pounds. So females get up to 260. That doesn't seem that, that, that big. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's big, but fucking... Like, grizzly, bear, can't, can't, grizzly bears weigh like a thousand. I like, get it, but 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 you're talking about like mounting one and having that like trek you through snow. Oh yeah, no, no, I understand. That's why I was confused. Like, how does this go down? Uh, the males or the bulls uh, are often all right. They measure seventy-one to eighty-four inches in length. Usually weigh three hundred and fifty-one to four hundred and one pounds. Exceptionally large males have weighed as much as seven hundred pounds. Weight varies drastically between seasons, obviously. Blah blah blah. See, you yeah. you don't ditch your snowmobile for some fucking pussy. It's got to be some thoroughbred no. of a reindeer that's hopped up on God knows what. And I know what it is. It's mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean I totally I'm fine with it as a way of a method of fucking locomotion. Like I'm totally. <laughs> It's so it's uh, I would do it if I knew how I'm not Siberian, though. So I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of fucking reindeer wrangling. You might be trans Siberian. Just so you... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, am I fucking jokes up tonight? Am I fucking fucking terrible, bits up tonight terrible. with this? No, you're good, man. Oh, all right. All right. Just just make sure. man. Put me in my place. Yeah. See, like, look, let's see. How, how big is a moose? Because them motherfuckers, they be big. You know, they're stupid as fuck. Who, Moose? Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Look, I watch a lot of the Alaska shit on, like, National Geographic and Discovery and all that stuff. And all I know is that those motherfucking bush people aren't scared of nothing. They ain't scared of bears. They ain't scared of shit. But they get out there, and they're like, hold up, camera guy. There's a fucking moose bull over there. And it will fucking kill us. Like, it's like the only animal that these very hard human beings that live in, like, one of the toughest places on the planet are scared of. So. Okay. I, it, hey, I didn't say, I didn't say they weren't dangerous. I just said they're stupid. Yeah, well, I, well, they could be stupid as fuck, but when they stand at, like, seven feet tall. <laughs> I, think they, I think they weigh thousands of pounds. Nope. I don't care how stupid you are. That yeah. makes it worse that you're that size. <laughs> you make it like, like Andre the Giant wasn't stupid. He was just perceived stupid. But imagine if he really was stupid. And just, like, yeah. blasting through fucking, you know. <laughs> that just, he just didn't know any better. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? He it's did, like the whole like he, you know he, like you squeeze a hug a bunny too hard like he's just, you can't you, you know yeah he it's he, risky Andre he did play uh, Bigfoot in the Million Dollar Man or the Six Million Dollar Man sorry dude the females weigh up to a thousand pounds Whew. damn see that's why I thought reindeer were like oh when I saw two sixty I was like oh that's a lot smaller than I expected yeah rain reindeer are just caribou. They're not That's special. Well, They're just, but why? Why are these people Caribou ditching button. ditching snowmobiles? Because you guys made fun of me for horsepower. I was like, why? Why do they do this? And Alan was like, oh, because of horsepower, because of engines. It <laughs> ah, makes that was many, a great one. <laughs> it makes many more horses. Why are people just ditching <laughs> snowmobiles for reindeer? Because so of the counteract. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because of the, what we already discussed is that reindeer have thrived in this region running from natural predators for centuries so just because you're on their back 
it ain't gonna thwart their agility or ability yeah. to move. Okay. So yeah, they're they're more reliable. You totally. get, snowmobiles <laughs> break down; they run out of gas. They're like the Greg Luganuses of the uh, of the Yukon. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I think it's all about just their ability to run. Like, I mean, you get snowmobiles stuck in fucking snow that reindeer run through. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're clearly the optimal way- method of fucking transport. It's just, I, like I said, it's all about how do you get one. Do you think yeah. it's like a, like an avatar moment? Your your uh, your things, your uh, snowmobile breaks down. A reindeer's running past you, and you have to jump on and link. Just the... fucking shove your te- your your tentacle penis into it. Yeah, and then connect. And, and then probably how it runs. All of a sudden, you're all of a sudden you're uh, one with, you, one you with the reindeer. It. You are it. Yeah, you're you are galloping through snow. Yeah, yeah, and your skin <laughs> turns blue. Okay, I think we're done here. All right. can... <laughs> is that fun, Black can... Friday? That is your fun fact Friday. If we can't find bits from this, we're fucked. <laughs> we're yeah, this fucked. is yeah, yeah. This is a lot of this is a lot of good quality entertainment. Well, speaking of quality entertainment, we got one more reading from Colonel Sanders. Well, every holiday season, this old chunk of coal has himself a diamond of a memory. The year was 1928. I was with my first wife and our first child, who had quite the stutter. Now, he was calling my name to come put the star on top of that there tree when he said, Hey, da 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 And before that vowel could reach the end of his lips, the front of my fist reached the fat of his face. It was quite the scene, them teeth flying through the air, landed right on top of the big pot of mashed potatoes I prepared for our Christmas dinner. It was upon viewing the scene of the ruined meal that I realized, Corn. That's a hell of a topping. I'll tell you what. A million dollar idea for a five thousand dollar dental reconstruction? That's a Christmas miracle. God bless. <laughs> God Jesus Christ. That one's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, man. <laughs> signs us off. Colonel, what a what a man. What a man. What a man. What a man. Fucking, that's the most mysterious man in the world. It's like, fucking, it's a mystery. It seems a lot of sex and violence. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. The, the Sekis was fucking up. Should have done, done uh, the colonel. Should have well, done the colonel. Spent right. a lot of time in Guadalajara, so, you know. That's right. <laughs> Would have worked out well. Uh Alan, anyway, Alan, where, where can you find the middle class uh, holes around the Christmas no, season? No, some random social media sites. Just Google it. Uh, <laughs> no, you can find us for your listening pleasure. You can hear us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. And of course, for your favorite shit talking pleasures, you can find us at MDL Class Holes on Instagram and Twitter. We are the Middle Class Holes on Facebook. And of course, we're just at Middle Class Holes on TikTok. Check us out on TikTok. And YouTube. Check us out on YouTube because we like comments on YouTube and we will absolutely answer them. Hell yeah, especially is there, uh, if, if they're as good as the uh, z- Zake Snake Biter. The Snake Biter? Yeah. Yeah. If you give us gold like that, we'll definitely talk about you on the show. <laughs> but you can always email us at tickleourtummies.com, at gmail.com, tickleourtummies at gmail.com if you don't like any of those platforms. Well, we do, in fact, have uh, a couple emails this week. Now, okay. one email, a little controversial. I'm not going to read that one because this one kind of eh, this one kind of folds it in. But uh, Farmer Janky has finally gotten back and thought of this, and uh, it reads, I'm not sure what, what, I'm not sure what uh, dialect or accent I should read this one in, so I'm going to go with a little bit of southern, southern country, southern cowboy. I hope my three favorite podcasters behind the Rogan are faring well. With things getting bad again, don't forget that it's your right to stock up on ivermectin. <laughs> or not. <laughs> also, because of you fellas, I got three pricks now for one of each of my favorite middle class holes. And by that, I mean vaccinated. You can stand back up. You forgot about monoclonal antibodies, but none of you brought up the antiviral pills. Anyway, how are the holidays been at the work offices? Christmas music, sweaters, or not at all? I'm surprised Alan didn't attend the Thanksgiving podcast considering his love of food segments. 
<laughs> best Thanksgiving <laughs> food? <laughs> or better yet, should I now ask what you will be eating for the holidays? Christmas? No tea. I'm a ham and potato salad staple. <laughs> but who says I'm cooking? <laughs> Anything else is hogwash. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Pick it out for the holidays, I say. <laughs> Happy holidays and have a good weekend. <laughs> oh, wow. Harbor Jinky. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's perfect. I feel like I was just the insane ramblings of a madman. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of was. <laughs> Farmer Janky and the Colonel should have crossed paths <laughs> in, in their Shit, day. That'd be good. That'd be good stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm a ham and potato salad guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a do it. kind of guy. Mm. Oh, shit. It's cool. Anyway. Whew, there's man. that. We're getting back together. All right. Uh, well, folks, hey, listen. Middle class holes, our living room, uncleaned <laughs> or semi-cleaned or wiped down, preparing for guests. Uh, <clears throat> only anyway. wiped down from front to back, though. Front to back. Cream cheese filled, <laughs> only in Alan's kitchen. Uh, hey, that, enjoy your holidays. <laughs> What's that? I'm going to send you a picture. <laughs> Good. Good obscene. <laughs> Post that shit. Uh, enjoy your holidays. Whatever it is that you and your family uh, enjoy, stay safe uh, yes. and be uh, be jolly. And hopefully, it's better than twenty twenty. And that's stay all I safe. gotta say. Fuck that. Stay safe. Get boosted. If you're not boosted and you don't want to do it, at least get yourself tested. Don't take shit home to your grannies and your and your parents and your dogs and your cousins because that shit's just not family like. No, Farmer Jinky would even say he got three shots. Uh, yeah. Le- yeah. Enjoy yourselves. Have fun. Take her easy. We'll see you uh, one last uh, trip before we'll, we'll get one more show in before 2021 closes out. And that'll be that. Otherwise, enjoy your evening. Take her easy. And though it may be a thrill, don't take me fishing near a hill. Just ask Miss Smith, give me a big old glass of beer. Because I get drunk most every day. I was seen a 